How are you all doing this week? Welcome to The WAN Show. We've got a fantastic show lined up for you. The big news in tech this week is obviously the social apocalypse. That's right. We've got the verification topic. We're talking about Twitter. We're talking about, uh, what was the other one? <laughs> Tumblr, Tumblr's verification check marks. We got Dbrand's verification check marks. We'll be chatting a little bit about that. In other news, there were some various NVIDIA shenanigans. The X4080 12 gig is back as a 4070 Ti but it's still going to hurt your wallet, which is pretty hilarious. Uh, Logitech has confirmed that they are sending me a sample of the G Cloud. Okay, so oh, that was no. their, that was their cut. This is a review sample. Uh, so we'll be talking about sort of my, my thoughts about the G Cloud. I'm, I'm pretty excited to get hands on with it. And in what I'd say is probably the biggest news of the week, Ash Ketchum finally did it. Finally, the the best official, officially best Pokemon trainer. I'm sure Luke's going to have a lot of thoughts about that. At least I hope he does because I never even watched the original show, so I have no idea what's going on. Oh, also... What does that even mean? <laughs> I shouldn't uh, laugh that loud in the airport. <laughs> also, Luke's here with me, you know? So, um, yeah, you can tell it's going to be a really great show because he's definitely... You can see he's verified. <laughs> Verified here. Yeah. All right, let's roll that intro. Yeah. First time ever. I was trying to figure out why there was coffee here. The show is brought to you by Zoho One, Squarespace, and something else I missed there. <laughs> One second. And brilliant. All right, let's jump right into our big topic of the week. Okay, Luke, you've been traveling, obviously, because you're clearly not here. So um, yes. well, have you been keeping up with what's been going on in the social apocalypse? I thought after the first week of Elon owning Twitter that the, the days of 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 hot and heavy, fast and loose updates coming was going to be, uh, we're going to be kind of over. But if anything, it feels like the chaos has accelerated. Have you been paying attention to this? I've been checking in at least at least like once or twice a day just to scroll for a few seconds, and it is it is brilliant and beautiful chaos in my opinion. I said before this was happening that I was happy that it was happening because it's not like he could make it any worse. And if anything, he's definitely made it more entertaining. Um, and, and in his own words, I don't know if this is necessarily 100% true or not, but in his own words, there's more users on Twitter right now than there ever has been, or more activity at the very least. So, I mean, to a certain degree, it's working. Maybe all the ad advertisers are leaving, but there's a lot of people. Yeah, there's, I mean, I, I honestly, I haven't been able to look away from the train wreck. And you know what the really mind-boggling yeah. thing to me is, is that, one of as one of the chief trolls on Twitter, never mind chief twit, the fact that he couldn't see this coming from a thousand miles away. Like, man, have you checked out some of the amazing impersonator accounts? Oh yeah, there, there's there's been some pretty epic ones. The um, whatever that pharmacy was, Eli Lilly and Co. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Fake, fake verified Twitter account for Eli Lilly and Co. tweeted, and this is this is the most amazing part. Tweeted, insulin is now free, after which their stock actually plummeted. Is that amazing <laughs> or what? Their stock went from three sixty eight oh. down to three forty six, and this isn't like Whoa. this isn't a stock that was going down. This is a stock that's been going up for the last month actually has trended up overall for the last six months and experienced a significant daily dip. Now, I do expect it to recover. Uh, Eli Lilly and Co. has since apologized for the misunderstanding. Uh, they say that um, they're sorry that um, you thought they said that. They're not sorry for <laughs> gouging on the price of insulin. No, no, no. They're not sorry yeah. about that at all. But they're sorry that they're sorry that anyone thought that they would stop doing that. It's the most awful non-apology apology that I think I have 
ever seen. Like very fitting for a pharmaceutical gouging company, though. Oh, totally makes sense. Absolutely, absolutely. It is amazing to me what pharmaceutical companies get away with in the states. And the in the conversation under that tweet, I saw a lot of people talking about the price of insulin, which they absolutely should. And one of the most common defenses for the price of insulin is that it doesn't matter because your insurance pays for it. And it's like, no, no, no. Insurance does not pay for anything. You pay for insurance, and then the money passes through your insurance. That that's how yeah. insurance works. And if your em- insulin costs more, you'll pay more for insurance. And if your employer pays for your insurance, that's money that could have gone to you. Yeah. Right? Come on, people. 100%. Come on, people. Oh. That's still money leaving your like sphere of influence, whether or not it was going to be 100% exactly directly deposited into your bank account or not is not 100% relevant. Your boss might have ended up just keeping it, right? But there's a chance, Maybe. okay? There's a chance that some of it might have made its way to you. Once it leaves <laughs> your company's coffers and goes to some pharmaceutical company, that chance goes to zero, there is zero chance that it makes it to you. This is just this is just like how does money work basics here. And I'm sure that I'm preaching to the choir. I know our audience is pretty clever and understands fundamentally how insurance works. At the end of the day, no insurance company will stay solvent if dollars out is greater than dollars in, right? So you have to charge at least as much as you end up paying out. That's how it works. I mean, it's, and that's another really funny one to me is, you know, people will go, but you know, I don't want to, I don't want to pay for someone else's medicine. That's that socialism. But that, that's what insurance basically is, is everyone pays into this pool and then the people that need it get paid out. And the, the greater those payout prices are, the fewer people they can afford to treat and the more rejected claims, like the whole thing is like, you know, you're kind of kind of all on the same team until the insurance companies and the pharmaceutical companies collude to get the pricing as high as possible so that, well, it's not even a collusion. I'm sure the insurance companies would rather pay less, but there's the whole thing where you can't, um, uh, where the negotiation abilities of these companies is limited in the U.S. It's, it's wild. It's wild what's going on down there. And to be clear, yeah. we have tons of problems, tons of problems in Canadian healthcare. Like lots of problems, but our insulin is like cheap, which is good, I guess. <laughs> we, have, <sighs> we have that benefit at least. Yeah, man. The fact that you can, it, I mean, just with the, with the midterm elections going on down there right now, the fact that anyone can get elected without a platform that includes like just putting big pharma in its place is mind blowing to me. Like the, that that's not yeah, the number of, one. Like, issue regardless of like reforming their medicare system or or whatever like e- even if they kept their system entirely the same just stepping on pharmaceutical companies a little bit in general i think makes a ton of sense i don't know like, man some some of the you, you look at u.s developed drugs in the u.s and they're like 20 times the price as that same drug from that same company literally five country. minutes across the border yeah like literally like, like, you could walk if I, in some cases to somewhere where it costs a fraction as much if i was an american in america i would be pissed that i was subsidizing the drug costs for other uh like rich nations basically like that that would be annoying why why, why do we have to do that I would be angry about that and wanting that to change completely regardless of any other healthcare reform stuff. Just like the pharmaceutical stuff is crazy. That's all. But anyway, what, what was your favorite thing that happened on Twitter since Elon's oh, takeover? Well, I know mine. Let's go ahead. Let's, let's just do kind of a week in review here. So this week on Elon's sure. Twitter, uh, $8 Twitter blue launched. You got to give credit where credit's due. Okay. Elon said that they were going to launch this paid verification program like extremely quickly. This is probably faster than Twitter has ever gone from conceptualizing a new product to launching it, right? So credit where it's due. 
They got this program launched extremely quickly. So for $8, you could buy a check mark, and that check mark would um, identify your account as uh, like blue verified. So it was part of the Twitter Blue program. And then clicking on it would also identify if it was like a legacy verified account. Um, then they launched a second gray official check mark under accounts that had legacy verification <laughs> to differentiate actual you know, verified accounts that were at risk of being impersonated with just uh, people who paid for a blue um, picture next to their name. Uh, Tumblr launched their own $8 blue check marks. Uh, you can apparently buy up to 24 of them, which is pretty neat. Um, just thought we thought we'd throw throw that in there. So Tumblr Wait, managed to why? get in the news about this. Well, I, why anything, Luke? Why can you buy twenty four of them? Because then you're more can verified. You, like, gift them or like, like, what are you, an idiot? No, you could just stack up to twenty four <laughs> of them in your username. Um, then, <laughs> within hours, Elon killed the official check mark. Uh, he also tweeted, far too many corrupt legacy blue verification check marks exist, so no choice but to remove legacy blue in coming months. No idea what that means. Um, Me and on either. Thursday, this is this is great. I actually was reading an article whose premise was um, Elon's Twitter might not be that screwed. Trimming the headcount reduces the operating cost, and the users are up. And uh, he's got this uh, this uh, this core of of like like right handed people who are going to be able to help execute in this area and this area and this area. And in the time between, I guess, uh, them writing that article and me reading it two of the top executives that were supposedly going to be uh, helping Elon steady the ship. I think one of them was in charge of advertising sales, and then one of them was, uh, I'm sorry. Trust I really, and safety. Trust and safety. That's trust right. Trust and safety. Yeah. Uh, head of trust and safety <laughs> um, left. <laughs> oh, man. Um, Twitter employees were told that remote work is ending if you can physically make it to an office and you don't show up, resignation accepted. Um, that was apparently the message. And in an internal memo, Elon didn't quite directly say that the company might go bankrupt. Or was this was this in the was this in the internal memo? I I can't remember. Uh, where is it? Blah blah blah. No, I don't know. He sent out a memo that basically said as much, though. Oh, man, that is wild. Uh, also said he wants to turn it into a bank with high-yield money market accounts. I have no idea whatsoever that that even what that even means. Friday morning. So this Me is either. this morning. All right. So this is less than a, <laughs> less than a week after Twitter Blue launched. Um, they suspended the launch of Blue, brought the official checkmark back, but only for certain brands. Uh, leading to Twitter support's two most recent tweets being completely contradictory. Oh, man. Um, so here Epic. you go. Yeah, here it is. Official. We are not currently putting an official label on accounts, but we are aggressively going after impersonation and deception. To combat impersonation, we've added an official label to some accounts. So which one is it? Uh, I saw a really hilarious tweet uh, from someone uh, putting putting Twitter Blue's official verification check mark uh, with the appropriate uh, company. So it had a head of lettuce uh, on there, like uh, little bar graphs for how long these things lasted. So it had a head of lettuce at three days. Uh, it had uh, Anthony Scaramucci. Do you remember, do you remember that guy? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Had him on there. Uh, I forget her name, but had uh, Britain's last Liz Truss, uh, Britain's uh, very shortest shortest lasting PM ever. Um, <laughs> oh man uh so yeah it was head and tr head of trust and safety uh CISA, so chief privacy officer um chief uh I iso uh, uh, information security officer i can't remember what uh CISO yeah. stands for in, in, yeah in infosec yeah and chief compliance officer all resigned i mean man uh this is a complete cluster okay luke what was your favorite part of the week hit me 
My favorite part um, w- was when everyone that I saw on the platform was impersonating Elon all at the same time. Did you, did you see that? <laughs> yeah. That was actually amazing. I opened Twitter and I thought it was glitched because as I scrolled through, literally every single account in my in my uh, news feed, whatever, was Elon Musk with his picture. And I had to scroll like, a few times to get to someone that wasn't impersonating Elon. And I was like, that's actually, that's some like epic everyone coming together on the internet stuff that you just, you don't see all the time, you know, that was fun. I, uh, I thought about joining some trend. A few of them seemed enticing, but then I realized I would have to, um, actually tweet to do that. So I kind of (laughs) decided not to. Yeah. Luke doesn't Um, tweet anyway. So. I, I hate Twitter so much. Ah, oh, it's um, it's interesting though because like, uh, I I think he knew. I I have a weird theory that I think he knew. Um, Are I you going four D chess on this? I think so. Yeah. Okay. I think he's a hundred percent intentionally trying to stir the pot as Sell much me. as possible. Uh, because he's trying to do the the web thing, right? He's trying to blow up the user base as much as possible. And sure. the usage on the platform, he's probably not lying. It is probably higher than it has ever been. Um, and him saying, like, Twitter might go bankrupt. A, a lot of people are posing this as a, as a new situation. Yeah. Um, Twitter has been almost bankrupt a ton of times. Twitter loses absurd amounts of money this is not a profitable platform it's a terrible website it's it's it was really poorly ran that was actually well documented like before elon took over yes this axing of employees not in this way yeah this was not not. the not the cleverest most smartest um big brain lines of code because dir i like the whole thing was kind of whack but they probably need to lose a bunch of employees um, they probably needed to change a lot of things that they were doing and bankruptcy was absolutely on the table and it was on the table for years. Um, so like, that's not a new thing. It's not suddenly potentially going to go bankrupt because Elon showed up. Yes. A bunch of advertisers pulled out, but they weren't profitable with the advertisers anyway. I mean, they there is losing. a big difference between a little bit unprofitable and very unprofitable though. Okay. Okay. Like so they advertising from, is ninety percent of their from revenue. Extremely, insanely unprofitable to the world is ending unprofitable. <laughs> they they were already losing like millions and millions of dollars. One year they lost two billion, didn't they? Like this was this was an excessively not profitable company. And yes, it got worse. But like, it's like it's already in the volcano, and he just like shoved it way further down. Uh, like it's it's it's. I'm astonished that Twitter is still around. I thought years ago, Twitter would just be gone because it's just a garbage platform. And what was it? I think the, the, was it the 2016 elections completely saved the platform? Like if that, if that crazy ball of chaos didn't happen, Twitter would have died. Um, and there's, there's a bunch of conspiracy stuff talking about how uh, Twitter is a big part of the reason why that election turned into the crazy ball of chaos that it was. And Twitter noticed that that was saving them. So they right. kind of helped edge it along, which I don't know how true that is or not. I've just seen some stuff about it. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, I don't know. The whole thing's a mess. It's been a terrible garbage fire. People are acting like it is suddenly now a terrible garbage fire. The fire might be bigger. The pile of garbage might be bigger, but it's been a terrible garbage fire the whole time. So, okay, hold on a second. Um, Another possible favorite moment this week was when uh, Elon sold another $4 billion of Tesla stock after saying he wasn't going to do that. Oh, did he? That's another, that <laughs> was, a, see that. that was another pretty good one. Um, oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. Tesla stock has uh, not been a good time. Now I think there was a little bounce. Um based on the like inflation consumer index or whatever i haven't actually paid attention tech in general had a had a pretty bouncy day yesterday but uh tesla has been on a not good 
not good run for the last little bit here, along with along with a lot of tech. But it's really not helping yeah. that there's investors expressing concern that Elon is spending all of his time dinking around with this money fire over at Twitter and not spending time building like cars that people actually want to drive and stuff. <sighs> yeah. yeah, I mean, that's probably fair. He's the CEO of like way too many companies. Um, I know he, he does his whole like I work super hard. I sleep at the factory thing but at a certain point you're spending like one day a week maximum at each company even if you are sleeping there so like yeah I don't know. <laughs> maybe just only sleeping there um all yeah. right so i think uh we can move on from twitter why don't we talk about the general tech apocalypse that's going on that's not just at twitter this week at yeah. Meta, 11,000 people were laid off. That was on Wednesday, which is 13% of the company's workforce. Um, Zuckerberg apologized to staff for somehow thinking that the massive surge in online commerce driven by COVID would not return to prior trends. Um, but insiders told Wired that the layoffs were also compensating for many failed projects from the last five to 10 years. Their Libra crypto thing, uh, their Lasso TikTok clone, uh, Portal. Remember Portal? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to say that we got some of that Facebook stupid money fire money from them before that whole thing oh, just yeah. turned into nothing. They're like video calling appliance. Remember that thing? Yeah. Yeah. Vaguely, yeah. Uh, Instagram, Facebook shopping plans, their podcast plans. Hey, I, uh, I, I, I got I some of, that. I got some of that money too. So that was that was pretty cool. Yeah. Thanks, uh, thanks Meta, um, the Meta Watch, and more. Uh, many analysts and investors are questioning a future in which Meta goes all in on the metaverse instead of putting more resources into things that have a clearer path to profitability. Um, I would question that a little bit. I'm going to, I'm going to throw some controversy in there. Sure. Hit uh, me. Yeah. I, I don't know that VR is necessarily it, but I don't know what else could be it. And I think Facebook is, or meta is understanding that their current platforms are kind of across the board becoming untrendy and dying. Um, well, they're, difficult they're not to defend. the thing anymore. Well, it's not, it's not so much that it's, or it is that. But the the main thing is that you know okay you're always talking to me about this what what's the what's the rule for how much easier something becomes in development or whatever amount of time what were you talking about there I I am I hope I'm not misquoting it but this is how I've been saying it for a while it's every three years everything gets three times easier okay and it's not you can't you can't boil that down it has to be at least three years whatever blah 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 yeah yeah so basically what it seems to me is that. Meta is understanding that the moat around their product is getting thinner. Yeah. So you can't differ like you can't just um say, oh yeah, we figured out we figured out scalability of something like a, you know, a feed that you can scroll through images or videos or whatever else. Someone else can build that now. So the yeah, there's only, open source projects for it at this point. Exactly. So the only thing that differentiates them is the user base. And the only thing that keeps a user base somewhere is trendiness. And this trendiness, it feels like comes and goes faster than ever. Like the rise of TikTok still blows my mind. How fast TikTok went from absolutely nothing to absolutely everywhere. Wild, right? So yeah, I think you're I think you're absolutely right. Is they have to figure out something. And you know what? I gotta be honest. What what is what else is there? So yeah, AR, VR, XR, whatever you want to call it, might not be it. But what is your next frontier of technical innovation that is going to create a huge moat around you that keeps your competitors out? Yeah, so I, I'm back. Hopefully this is working. But yeah, that was effectively my point. Um, and he, he could be right. He might just be currently far from the goal. I don't know that he's right. Um, but they need something, right? And they're seeing Apple just consistently have wins because they're owning the hardware space 
Um, they're, they're finding ways to make sure that they keep on getting more market share. And because they own the device, they can do things like that. Hmm, we're going to make it so that every, like when people install an open Facebook, it asks them if they want uh, the advertising tracking or whatever. And that just completely screws Facebook over. Apple is able to control that because they own the platform. I think, uh, I think, what the heck is that? Hopefully you guys heard that because that was weird. Um, I think the, the Zuck saw that happen and was like, I need that. I need to be able to own the platform. I need something that I can own the platform on. We tried the watch. We tried the portal. We tried, tried the all this other stuff. We Remember tried the, the phone. Facebook phone? None of that stuff right? is working. Yeah. <laughs> Vaguely, yeah. But none of that worked. So they need to be first, basically. Apple was first to smartphone effectively. I know there were some other ones, but it was the first of that kind. Um, and and they've they've held dominance ever since. So like, yeah, I, I, the, the general path, I totally understand. I don't know if VR is it. I hope it is it. That'd be cool. Well, you've been um, rooting for VR basically since the first time you heard about it. It's just, yeah, it's going slow, man. It's going slow. Yeah. And we knew the whole time that it was going to go really slow. I feel like if anything, he he put all his chips in too early. It's like that. What is that? The the first um, I almost said need for speed, not need for speed. The first Fast and the Furious when he's like too soon, kid, when he uses his nitrous or whatever. I feel like it's that situation. Like he, he probably sent it a little early. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think they should have kept doing like a decent amount of investment, but nothing as insane as they're doing right now. And then once it was a little bit more ready for them to actually hit it, um, that's when to go. But this is, this is quite the YOLO. Um, yeah. All right. Um, and I mean, you know what the really, the, the really big trend overall right now is tech companies cutting their staff. I mean, Luke and I just have this like um, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it other than layoff porn. But we in our Discord, like half of <laughs> half of what the two of us have been talking about is just like posting articles to each other of companies that have laid off 10, 20, 30. I mean, with Twitter, it was 50% of their staff. Um, it's, it's really, it's really rough out there right now. In other news, if yeah, you, it's it's been wild. If you feel like you have a lot to contribute to a platform like Flowplane or um, to to the LTT Lab, then uh, you know maybe, maybe get in touch. Uh, we're hiring, <laughs> yay! Not not enough positions to make up for what's going on right now, but we are <laughs> we are hiring. Um, yeah, yeah. You want you want to bring on eleven thousand people? So the Let's discussion, go. the discussion question here, coming back to Twitter and Facebook, and you know the terrifying reality that right now the media that we consume is effectively controlled by two utterly unrelatable billionaires, uh, Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> uh, the question is, how likely is it that an alternative decentralized social website makes a comeback here? Is there any hope? that this situation could actually lead to an improvement in the social media landscape. What are the I odds? Like part of what makes a social platform usable is moderation. Can, how can you possibly trust a decentralized website to moderate? And if it can't moderate, how will it ever be sustainable? People have shown time and time again that they are not willing to pay what infrastructure costs the second you know whether it's youtube trying to charge for 4k video or i mean twitter trying to charge for this blue check mark that could potentially keep the platform alive people have shown again and again and again they're not interested their expectation from the silicon valley model that has worked for so long is that this is free and so now all of a sudden what you want well, you want to charge? You want to charge for cloud storage? I'm outraged. So now what? Yeah, it's it's a really interesting problem um, because back in the day, privacy was king. People didn't want to be tracked. People didn't want all this type of stuff. Um, and then and then there's a there's an interesting thing, and we we've talked about this too. When when anything comes towards people's wallets. Uh, their stances on things can very rapidly and very strongly change. <laughs> um, 
So the second it's like, they'll be like, Oh, I want, I want privacy. I want to own my data. I don't want people to be able to track me. And then they're like, oh, I have to, I have to pay $4. Yeah, you can take all my tracking. You can take everything you want. Um, I'll do whatever. Yep. I mean, I there's a version. There was a version of the Oculus Quest 2, the business one, that costs like twice as much or something like that, but didn't have all the Facebook tracking stuff in it. Nobody talks about that. Nobody bought it. Businesses, sure, yep. but individual users, like, I don't know, a few hundred bucks, my soul. Sure. Okay. Right? Yep, exactly. Yeah, so like, I don't know. It's rough. Um, maybe, maybe if someone comes up with something that's, uh, I, I know decentralized is already in this, in this text, but if someone comes up with something that's like peer hosted, um, but peer hosted things. Uh, they have a tendency to evolve into a dumpster fire. Yeah. I'm not going to lay the sure blame do. on anyone in particular, but they really do. Yep. Yeah, it's like kind of a problem, actually. Um, so I don't know. I, I, my gut reaction is like, nope, nope. The social space is like established. The only people that can step into it are are uh, setups like TikTok, where there's like you know kind of suspicious funding behind all of it, and yada 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 yada. Uh, but then Discord kind of came out of nowhere as well. I mean, um, Discord's funding is a little suspicious too. That's true, but I think Discord <laughs> just saying. Discord had an answer to a space that was totally messed up at the time. Um, people were kind of done with the like mumble ventrilo team ski team speak uh, yep. model again. People don't want to pay for anything. Um, I mean, mumble Skype, was free. People still didn't want to deal with just the obtuse setup process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Skype kind of stepped in there. For a really weird like one to two year almost period. accidentally um, though oh yeah absolutely um and then people abandoned it because it was horrible uh so so discord was able to holistically answer this question but it's not like facebook is going anywhere it's not like twitter's well for now twitter going anywhere yeah um yeah uh, that'll be interesting but I yeah, King RGB I in float plane chat asks, what do you think of the Twitter blue business model compared to discord? Aren't they basically the same thing? Well, the difference is that the discord, um, what, what's it called? Nitro or whatever it is. Yeah. Nitro mm -hmm. on discord yeah. adds value with features that actually cost money. So for example, mm -hmm. one of the things you can do in Nitro is share your screen at a much higher resolution to the other people in your chat. Um, that can have a very real value to gamers who want to kind of uh, play skeezy in a game like Escape from Tarkov, right? If they want to have a low latency mm -hmm. stream where they can see where their allies are or whatever the case may be. Um, what's the equivalent for Twitter Blue? What, I get some pixels? I get some pixels on my, on my name? Like that doesn't have a value that to me, it doesn't enhance my experience in a meaningful way. Um, and so what Twitter tried to do, or I should say Elon, because this is not Twitter, the organization, this is Elon, was without thinking about it, leap in, make verification, which was a clear thing that people valued because verification meant you, you know, had a big e -peen or whatever. So take a thing that people and valued and paywall it. And kind of a pillar of, of current like social platforms as well as you have, you have, uh, and I know Twitter didn't exactly work this way, uh, but it was somewhat close, you know, yeah, you yeah. have, you have creators that are trying to push on the platform and make careers out of posting on this thing, whatever it is. Um, and they get some form of badge to be like, this is a real person who's trying to do this thing yes. um, that happens on YouTube, that happens on TikTok, that happens pretty much everywhere else. And that, sort of happened on Twitter. But again, this is something that I feel like people are constantly forgetting. The whole verification process was a dumpster fire. Yeah, and... It, it had huge problems. And it existed for a reason just, that wasn't to make money. Yeah. It existed yeah. to prevent these... Um, these uh, it just barely existed. That's yeah, it, well, okay, so it barely existed, but, but it was to prevent this whole impersonation problem from being yes. from spinning out of control so all of a sudden making it something that you can pay for is obviously going to completely undermine the reason that it existed in the first place a it will turn the check mark from something of value into something worthless and b 
it will make its entire value, which is to the platform, which is that it gets rid of impersonation, doesn't get rid of it, but reduces impersonation problems and destroy it. So it was just, I mean, I, I think this really raises the question. Um, is Elon's prior success a total accident or is it that he's just gotten arrogant from the prior success? Because it's pretty clear looking at this that these are not genius IQ moves. So I what's think, happening? Um, my my thing here is he, I think he knee jerked on a joke to buy Twitter, and then it went a little too far. He tried to bail out. They forced him. He, he has a relatively recent thing talking about like how he he didn't actually see a, a reality where he was going to get stuck purchasing it, um, and then he did get stuck purchasing it. Um, it was either get stuck purchasing it or pay a, I think like a one billion, one billion. dollar fine. But or why something. didn't he just pay the billion? Because what? Because what, wasn't he Twitter has, burning three he million absolute, a day. He has absolute fu money and just doesn't care. I think. Right. So then, why not pay the billion? I guess the damage to the ego would have been. Great. I don't know. That's yeah. But then yeah, hold worth, on. He, he has he has effectively infinite money. But there's and someone tried to call him on it, and he he said fu. And instead of paying the one billion dollar fine, took it from them, fired all of them, trashed their house, and burned everything. I think I think that's what's happening. <sighs> that doesn't Is seem big brain no. to me. Uh, I mean, sure, but again, he still has infinite money. It like it does when you have what well, he still has like I'm assuming like what 150 billion dollars. That's just a random guess. Uh, it's a lot less than that now. Tesla's stock, where most of his wealth was tied up, is uh, a lot more down there than it was. Google says one hundred and eighty-eight point one billion. Yeah, I guess we'll I don't have know how to. How recent that is? I guess we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't know. I just. I just don't know. I just don't know what to. I don't know what to make of it because there have definitely been times that I look at what he's doing. I go, yeah, it's got to be like 4D chess. You know, I must just not understand the game he's playing right now. Uh, this game just looks like absolutely having not only bad ideas, but no idea whatsoever how to tell if your ideas are bad or how to manage people. And um, so that's his whole thing is he's supposed of, to be a smart business manager. Like that's his whole image. Yeah. Again, I feel like he's just trying to light the, light the room on fire. Um, but yeah, apparently at, updated as of yesterday, he is at 199.8 billion. That's a lot of billions. That's a lot of billions. It's it's entirely too many billions. So like, okay, he lost 40. He still has 200. <laughs> Nothing matters. He has infinite money. I don't know. Yeah, okay. I think, uh, I think it was worth it to him. E even if what he ends up doing uh, is just completely nuking it, I think it was worth it to him for, for all those people that were like laughing at him and going, ha, 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 we got you. You have to, you have to pay us a billion dollars now. I think he's going like, no, I'm going to buy the whole thing and just – fire all of you and nuke everything and here's here's blah, blah, my blah. response to that i think that if if the if the pride or the you know the pr negative pr implications of paying the billion dollars was what made him go through with the purchase um i think the only way he thinks going through with it looks better is if he actually thinks he can run the thing and he he did like he tweeted out these simplistic solutions for problems that just obviously weren't going to work and wouldn't listen to anybody about how they were obviously bad. I just I can't I can't fathom it. Um anyway, there's I other news. I think it's news. a very different thing than the companies that he has ran outside of this. Well, yeah, from, content moderation is the worst job in the world. Yeah, and it's social platforms are very like he went from maps and payments to cars and spaceships and other very high technical make an extremely complicated top of the line device or thing 
and have people buy or use it. Um, and it is a product that you package and you deliver. This is now, um, he's entering the web space where nothing makes money. Everything burns millions or billions of dollars. He took one of those companies and took it private, which is just, that just doesn't work. Like it actually doesn't because they don't make money. Um, so there's an issue. Uh, and, and I think he, he just, yeah, just has no idea what he's doing, but was unwilling to pay the 1 billion because it would have been a loss. I think like, a, a not a loss of money. I don't think he probably cared as much about that. I think it would be a, a like strategic loss. If that makes sense. The, the people on the board would have beat him and he probably didn't like that. That's All my right. guess. I have no idea. Well, I got I got nothing else other than this is hilarious, and I will be continuing to watch it because oh, yeah. it's hilarious. Uh, there were some NVIDIA shenanigans this week. The GPU formerly known as RTX 4080 12 gig is back. Now it's the 4070 Ti, no. and it still hates your wallet with a passion. Um, a historically accurate leaker, copite 7 Kimi, gave details about the new 4070 Ti. Um, when it was announced, when the 4080 12 gig was announced in September, the card was panned for its approximately 30% lower performance than the 4080 16 gig. After criticism, Nvidia canceled the 12 gig card, but made no comment about the fate of the AD 104 GPU that it was built around. So, the 4070 Ti is rumored to have the same 7680 CUDA cores and 12 gigs of 192-bit GDDR6X. Um, and while it was originally expected to have a $900 MSRP, the recent announcement of the RX 7900 XT may cause NVIDIA to reconsider this price. Though, they have to be careful right now not to cannibalize their 3000 series cards that they uh, seem to still have a lot of stock of. So then this 4070 non-TI is expected to be based on this same core, but likely not the full version of it. And both are expected to release, so 4070 TI and non-TI, in January 2023. Um, in other news, the RTX 4080 16 gig appears to be around the corner. Prices currently range from 1200 to 1550 at Micro Center, who has 13 listings of custom cards up. Um, that's based on an MSRP of $1,200. Whew. NVIDIA requested that all board partners should have at least one model of MSRP available at launch, and this is really interesting. So that's, uh, that's an interesting bullet point. So remember when EVGA publicly broke up with NVIDIA recently? Yeah. Yeah, I was already aware of NVIDIA's little requests to their board partners to have something available at MSRP at launch. So you know how that works, that whole thing? Uh, wouldn't that mean that they make nothing? Well, okay, so they make nothing at launch. So you know how it would always happen that at launch there would be like a like a, oh, a, yeah, a, yeah. A, an 8800 KO or whatever. There'd be a particular version. It would have like two fans and then yeah. you would Speaking order that and it would be on back order forever. But the super clock and super super clock and KO plus and whatever FTW would all be in stock. And then the computer store would call you and say, hey, would you like to switch to one of these other cards? It's another 30 or 40 bucks. Yeah, that's yep. how they would handle that, because NVIDIA's pricing, the MSRPs that they get to advertise to you, the end user, um, are not are not real. They don't actually have enough margin in them for the board partners to hit those prices in the long term. So board partners would quietly discontinue that particular RTX or GTX, whatever. And then they'd have these other ones later on when NVIDIA is willing to turn a blind eye. So guys, keep a close eye over the next six months on 3080 16, excuse me, 3080, 4080 16 gig cards and watch those MSRP boards that are available will slowly start to drop away being replaced by ones that cost another 50, 100, $150 more. And I don't blame the board partners. I for real do not blame the board partners. Uh, there's a third rumor, more NVIDIA shenanigans. Uh, the RTX 2060 has apparently been discontinued. According to a Chinese tech forum post citing supply chain its sources, both the RTX 2060 and 2060 Super will shortly be discontinued. Uh, GPUs for these boards have stopped reaching partners, apparently. 
Um, so, yeah, if the price is rumored to be the same for the 4070 Ti, okay, uh, and the GPU is the same, should we still be just as mad now that they've given it a new name? Well, isn't the name better? I guess the name is better, but it's still 30% less performance than a 4080 16 gig for $900. Oh, yeah, it's complete BS. I... I, I would have said that this feels like a move by NVIDIA to push the uh, below 80 bracket closer to $1,000 if it was premeditated. Because it's not premeditated, I I have no idea. Yeah, it's just, just ridiculous. doesn't seem to be 4D chess at all. That's honestly, yeah. I'm getting real disillusioned lately. There's been so many times I see moves from big corporations who probably have a lot better of a PR department than I do. Um, you know, a lot more <laughs> lawyers, uh, a lot more accountants and advisors. And I see them just, I see them doing stuff. And it kind of, you know, when you're young, I feel like you've got faith in the system a little bit, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, smart people, competent people with with a good vision for the future and and a good team around them are the ones doing stuff and making decisions and and you know making sure that keeping the barbarians you know off our shores or whatever you know what I mean and yeah it's really quite a disappointing moment when you grow up to the point where you realize that all the old people are just as stupid as you are yeah yeah that yeah. Because yeah. I don't, half the time, I don't feel like I know what's going on. But then I look at our success and I kind of go like, man, um, huh. So even though we have, like, I, internally, I feel like we got a lot of problems, you know? And yet somehow our execution gets us as, as far as we've gotten. And it just, it just has shaken my, it's shaken my belief. Okay. It's shaken my trust that people know what they're doing. It's all I'm yeah. It's all I got to say. It's all I got to say about that. Uh people did Linus just dunk on his own PR team. We don't have one. <laughs> That's the joke. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Um hey, speaking of speaking of success, you guys are a huge part of it. If you are looking to send in a message to the show, which I will be going through all of them once Luke gets on his flight, uh, maybe we'll do a couple of them beforehand. But if you want to send in a message to the show, it's through merch messages. We've actually got a couple big launches on the store this week. If you guys were looking for something fancy to pick up, Luke, you might appreciate this. Uh, we are launching a puzzle. It's pretty affordable, $19.99 for a puzzle featuring our CPU graphic, and it's available in three styles. You can get the 1,000-piece version of the puzzle, which is quite challenging. You can get the 100-piece version of the puzzle, which is more like if you just want to kind of put it together and be like, I did that. Uh, yeah, pretty big pieces on that one. Or if you <laughs> don't really like putting puzzles together at all, you can get the one-piece version of the puzzle, which has all the pieces of the thousand-piece version, only half cut. So you can look like you put together a whole thousand-piece puzzle if you just like the graphic and you want to put it up and be like, yeah, I made a puzzle. And you can just hang that on your wall. So that's the... Um, <laughs> that, that's the... <laughs> the poser. The poser skew for the puzzle. <laughs> the one piece is this a thing like is do people do this i have no idea i've never heard of that before we did it i I, that's epic. I don't remember whose idea it was but it seems like the kind of thing that's on the subject of you know is our leadership actually uh competent or are they just stupid um i'm pretty <laughs> sure that was a me thing because we were discussing I can't tell. Yeah, go ahead. I can't tell if it's an anime meme or if like it's actually a good idea. <laughs> I don't know. I really, I really don't know either. Uh, we had actually, <laughs> I do. I'm pretty sure this was my idea actually. Now that I think about it, because the original concept, uh, this is a Lloyd project, and he likes difficult puzzles. Pay to win puzzle. <laughs> um, <laughs> Does it cost more? No, no, it should cost the same. No, it costs the same. It costs the same. The shipping's probably more because um, it's so big. But I, I remember the conversation because Lloyd likes difficult puzzles. And this artwork 
is challenging. Like this is going to be a hard puzzle to build the thousand piece version of it. Uh, so I was like, yeah, but like not everyone wants to build like a really hard puzzle because I wouldn't be that into that. Um, and so I was like, oh, why don't we do like easier ones? Let's do like a hundred piece version. And then I think I pitched like a four piece. So basically, it's just like four big pieces. <laughs> but then I thought that would look really stupid on the wall. So I, yeah, this is this was totally me. So I asked. Um, I asked whether we could ask the supplier because obviously they must just print the whole thing in one go and then die cut it. I was like, yeah. can they just push the die down halfway? And then that way, instead of it being obvious that they're a poser with their four piece or nine piece puzzle on the wall, they can look like they put together the hard one and still get that puzzle look, but easy mode. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, Jake from the lab is in float plane chat saying uh, Lloyd is a puzzle god. It took him ages. Yeah, the thousand piece is very difficult. So if you want, if you want to take the easy path, you definitely want the hundred piece or uh, the one piece. That's like uh, story mode, you know, in your favorite games. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the one piece. Uh, See, the, I have... the thousand piece. The the fact that the lines, like the angled lines. Uh, I don't even know how to describe it, are like jagged, like they don't line up, is insane. That's nuts. That would uh, be so hard. We even did a lot to make it easier. Like this, um, this pattern in the background wasn't there in the first version. And um, I think we added some different textures to the gold in the center for the CPU as well. Like uh, Lloyd and I went back and forth a lot on how to make this design slightly less punishing, but it is absolutely difficult. Uh, Tynan says, I was a tester for this. My goodness, it was insane. I puzzle with my family. Yeah. I've pu I puzzle with my family every year and have done for a long time. Yeah, it, it's a difficult puzzle. I will be very <laughs> yeah. curious to see. So I'll I'll be watching this. I'll try and remember to update you guys on the show because uh, I can see the SKU mix for what people actually buy um, on my on my app on the phone here. So if you guys are picking up the puzzle right now during the show, right when you're in the checkout, you can leave a merch message and it'll get sent. Either Bell will reply or it'll pop up down there or I'll talk about it later on the show. I'll be really curious to see what the mix is. Hold oh my God, I... speed run puzzle build. You should, we should do a thing. I'm pitching this live. This is scary. Uh -oh. We should do a thing where if people film their puzzle builds and they speed run it, like the top speed runner gets like a shirt or something. Oh, that'd be kind of cool. Uh, There's too many ways to cheat, I think. I think it would have to be from box open. And you have to like, is, is it wrapped? Uh, no, it? it comes in a little, uh, it comes in one of those little like drawstring bags, I think. So it comes in a tube. Ooh. And then it comes yeah. in, a, in a drawstring bag inside the tube. I'd have to find the packaging here. Yeah, hold on. Here we go. Uh, so I there's that. I think it's that. too complicated. No, yeah, there it is. There you to, go. There's to, a good to look make at it, it fair, I think it's too complicated. Yeah, you're probably right. Wow. So far, 100% of you want the, the the thousand piece. You guys are apparently Ooh. into difficult puzzles. So that's uh, that's good to Damn. know. We'll, we'll keep that in mind for the future. The Another thing to keep in mind for the future is um, that we will no longer have the crew neck sweater available on the store. It is on closeout right now. So uh, guys, the last time we did a clearance thing like this it went extremely quickly uh it's marked down from 40 bucks to 24.99 you guys can read the reviews it is an extremely beloved product on the store uh tons of five star reviews but we are doing away with it it's just one of our older products so now is a time to pick up the remaining sizes that are available do we have no oh we have, yeah, we have every size available. So you guys are going to want to move pretty quick on that. Finally, I have an update on the shoelace situation. Luke, you're going to get a kick out of this. We heard from a few buyers that their box only included a single shoelace, which is obviously not the intent. Upon further investigation, after we've shipped out over a thousand of these, it looks like the factory we worked with did in fact only include one shoelace per box. <laughs> on all of them? Every single one? Clearly this is a mistake. And we will be sending out oh, no. a second shoelace to everyone who has ordered shoelaces through us up until this point. Uh, and all new orders should receive the proper two shoelaces with their order. Hey, 
when I was a kid, it was fashionable to mix your shoelaces. Maybe we were just trying to bring that back. Yeah, no, that's not what we were trying to do. We were trying to have your both oh, of your okay. shoelaces match your hoodie. <laughs> so that's really not what we meant to do. So that's all for the LTD store updates. Um, we can also, how long do you have with us, Luke? Are, do you need to get uh, to your flight? Boarding has begun. Uh, has it but now? It, it doesn't. It doesn't completely close for 29 minutes. I should probably leave in like 10 or 15. Okay, I'm going to blow through um, the sponsors then. Uh, thanks, Brilliant, okay. for sponsoring this video. Brilliant is a hands-on and interactive way to learn STEM topics. Actually, hold on. No, I'm going to talk about Brilliant in a minute. I saw the most infuriating thing on uh, the package of a children's toy uh, last weekend. Uh, my kids were working on this uh, cute little project where they were making like flowers or something like that. And on the side of the box, it said STEAM, STEAM learning or something like that. And they went and what? I don't know why this bothered me so much, but instead of science, technology, engineering and math, they added an A for art. That's the what? whole f***ing point is that if it's a STEM toy, it's not art. It's like... The other thing. <laughs> Steam is just everything. <laughs> it's like when you have like freaking gluten free apple. Like, it, yeah. Yogurt with probiotic. I know. It's a steam, it's a steam toy. Alrighty then. What are you even talking about? Oh man, that's that's uh that's kind of sad. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, let's go back to Brilliant. Brilliant is a hands-on and interactive way to learn STEM topics. They offer thousands of courses with new topics to learn every month, like their Computer Science Fundamentals course, uh, which also includes a bit about how to draw in, in MS Paint, because it's because it's steam. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a bit that you missed if you just tune in for the sponsor spots. Uh, their services can be used to supplement a college education, or you can use them if getting smart is just a passion of yours. Um, if you work in the tech industry, you may have lost your job recently. Uh, Brilliant can be a great way to learn new skills. No, I'm serious. I'm serious right now. Brilliant can be a Fair great enough. way to learn new skills and make yourself the most employable person who applies, which is really the goal, right? If you don't understand the basics behind a problem, where do you even start troubleshooting? That's what Brilliant gives you, okay? The first 200 of you who head to brilliant.org slash WAN are going to get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Look, I know that's kind of a savage way to say it, but for real, that's what platforms like Brilliant are great at. Uh, the show is also brought to you by Zoho One. If you run a business, you know how hard it is to keep everything organized. Uh, but Zoho One is designed to help you run your entire business through a single unified platform. You can replace your patchwork of cloud applications, legacy tools, and paper-based processes with one operating system. Zoho One will help build your company's presence across marketing channels, send prospects the right messages, and measure ROI with out-of-the-box insights. They have a comprehensive set of account tools to organize your business finances, track payables, manage bills and expense, and even monitor your business's financial health. Whether it's sales, marketing, finance, analytics or support zoho one has got you covered sign up for zoho one today using the link below and get a free 30-day trial with no credit card required maybe elon needs zoho one finally the show is brought to you by squarespace running your own business can be hard there's certainly people who have shown that it can be very hard. They make it look hard. Uh, but making your website doesn't have to be hard. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that makes it easy to get your website up and running quickly. You can grow your business online through their marketing features, including SEO support, email campaigns, and social tools. They have a wide selection of award-winning mobile-optimized templates, and their commerce platform comes with everything you need from merchandising to checkout. Plus, if you need help, Squarespace offers webinars, guides, and a 24-7 support team to help you out. We love Squarespace so much, we use it and we pay for it. Uh, we get it for free for LinusMediaGroup.com because we're a partner, but we pay for it for LTXExpo.com. Re it really is easy to use. So go to Squarespace.com forward slash when and get 10% off today. All right, Luke, what do you want to talk about? I think I got a couple little things in here. Ah, yes. Ash Ketchum finally won Pokemon. Yeah, what? I, I don't, I don't know. Even, I, I... I don't know either. Is, I, there's no link for this. What's even happening? There, there were tens of thousands of tweets, Luke. This was trending during my my daily Twitter check-in on the dumpster fire. Ash Ketchum won it. 
after 25 years. Win Pokemon. There's all these different leagues and everything. I don't. League character Pokemon series has won the Pokemon World Championship. Okay. Oh, hold on. Some people, hold on. Some people on Float Plane are, are upset. Uh, about me, like supposedly, like being down on oh art or gosh. whatever. No, I'm not. That art is important. <clears throat> it's just that the entire point of calling something STEM was that it isn't that. It's science, technology, engineering, and math disciplines that are all very closely related and in a very different silo from art. If it's an art thing, then it can be an art thing, and if it's a STEM thing, then it can be a STEM thing. Not everything has to be everything to everyone. That's my whole point. Yes. We yes. absolutely do art projects with our kids. They're just, that they're art. And we do STEM things, and they're different. And you can make them, you can relate them to each other, like Starry Night, the whole, the movement of the, the things in the painting is whatever based on something. I don't know. It's really cool. Sure. You can make them related to each other, but you, you, that's when you are, you are taking two different disciplines that you've learned and you're bringing them together in a beautiful way. Yes. That's fine. Exactly. But it doesn't mean that, he didn't say art's bad. It's just not a part of STEM. Jeez. It's okay. Reminds me of my favorite tweet of all time. What what is it? Uh, I'm trying to find it. Um, hmm. man, I'm trying to remember. Uh, okay, what were we talking about before? Oh yeah, Ash Ketchum. Ash <laughs> Ketchum. Uh, yeah, 25 years later, he wins the Pokemon World Championship. I uh, maybe the burst of sales on Pokemon cards uh, because of those people buying Charizards and every, the whole world going nuts. Um, Went on a decline, so now they need to be back in the news. I have no idea. I don't know why this is a thing. Uh, I'm, I don't know the, why it wouldn't be either, though. I the don't know. people celebrating it is the thing that really was what I wanted to discuss because it reminded me of something that I was reading about on my last trip. I was just like kind of doom scrolling. And I came across some WWE news. Now, WWE is not something that I follow closely. I had a friend in high school who was super into WWF, would have been what it was called at the time. And so everything yeah. I know is from just um, absorbing through osmosis from Kenny from high school. Um, but this was this was this piqued my interest, and I did end up reading in, reading up on it a little bit. Basically, there was a lot of outrage over a recent SmackDown or Showdown or whatever it was, um, because the like the big fight, the big title fight, um, had a big problem, and that was that the guy who lost his shoulders weren't on the mat for the full three seconds. So the win shouldn't have gone to the other guy. And um, I was kind of, I was kind of mind boggled, right? Because on the one hand, I can absolutely appreciate people enjoying WWE as a form of entertainment in the same way that you might enjoy watching Pokemon as a form of entertainment. What I sure. absolutely cannot possibly fathom is being take it super seriously. is being really excited over the triumph of this fictional cartoon character and or <laughs> the victory that was robbed from this uh, from this actor playing a character in a in a fictional wrestling match when the result was predetermined in the first place. And my understanding is that most WWE viewers do know that it's scripted right yeah okay yeah. so then if you know that then you know that it didn't matter that his shoulders weren't pinned for three seconds that's like it's like being upset like you can poke fun at a at a botched um at a botched stunt in a movie right or like the gaff tape on the back of the stormtrooper's thigh in a new hope or whatever right but you shouldn't yeah, be yeah. mad about it all it was was the stunt where he was supposed to have his like supposed to have his shoulders down. They like screwed it up a little bit, you know, like they they botched the choreography. Oh no, poor Twitch! They're all upset that WWE is fake. Yeah, uh, that doesn't surprise me that you guys weren't wouldn't know. I love you, Twitch. <laughs> I love you, Twitch. It's like. <laughs> You're my um, you're my oh, favorite kid are, in the class. Are, Even if you catch on a little me. slow. Oh, they're calling um, you to the gate. So I'm I'm going to say goodbye. 
<laughs> Bye, everyone. Uh, fan standard. Hold on. Fan standard on float plane. This is amazing. This is a bad take, to be honest. Just because there's a script doesn't mean the rules don't apply. Yes, it does. <laughs> it means the rules are whatever they decide they are. <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, that's beautiful. Uh, okay, I gotta go, though. All right, I'll let you go. I'll let you go. I don't know, Bell. Bye, did... have a good rest of the show. All right, safe travels. Yeah, join him, Bell. Go, go. Bye. Uh, Bell, do you want to just jump over here, or are there things you need to do from over there? We could just we could just put the producer cam up. Yeah, we can just hang out with producer cam. Boom, all right. Do you want to just throw producer cam over there, and we'll just co-host the show together for the rest? I would love to. All right, cool. That sounds good. Uh, there's a couple other big news topics for the week. Um, the founder of Oculus, actually, I would have loved to talk to Luke about this, but you'll do. Uh, the founder of Oculus, Palmer Lucky. Wow, you've got that lined up pretty good. <laughs> I like that. First try. That looks great. Um created a lethal VR headset where if you die in the game, you die in real life. Now, this is a very misleading headline, but we're not the ones responsible for the misleadingness of the headline. We are, we are, that, I actually clicked on a headline that was that clickbait. He made a headset that makes you die, but actually it was more of a, supposed to be like a thought provoking art piece than an actual functional headset. Uh, we've got a, we should have a good shot of it here in the LTT forum. Uh, this was posted by Dragon Winged. Thank you very much. Uh, Source Daily Wire. Gets us a picture of the headset, I hope. Hello, headset. Um, sure. It's on Twitter. Hey, everybody. There it is. All right. So basically, it's either like explosive charges or bullets or something. I don't remember. But pretty much, if you die in game, it blasts out your brain. Um, and it was meant to sort of provoke discussion around the types of... Um, uh, types of VR experiences that we have now compared to the types of VR experiences that might exist in the future. So here's what he says. You instantly raise the stakes to the maximum level and force people to fundamentally rethink how they interact with the virtual world and the players inside it. Uh, pumped up graphics might make a game look more real, but only the threat of serious consequences can make a game feel real to you and every other person in the game. Uh, the device pays homage to Nerve Gear, a helmet worn by a fictional killer in the VR-themed manga Sword Art Online. Um, I thought it was actually, you know, in spite of the clickbait nonsense articles, he said he has... Uh, plans for an anti-tamper mechanism that will make it impossible to remove or destroy the headset. Um, there are also potentially bugs that could kill someone at the wrong time, so it hasn't been properly tested. But he doesn't intend to ever actually make it. And they are explosive charge modules. There you go. Um, I think it's actually a really interesting conversation because, uh, Bell, you ever play paintball? Yeah. It's one of the things that I like and in that I enjoyed most about paintball is when you've got the actual, um, and, and honestly, the, the way that I would always play is without armor. I would wear, I would play in a t-shirt and thin pants just so that I'm not like scuffing my knees while I'm, you know, kneeling around in the grass or sticks or mud or whatever. But I would, I would intentionally actually wear very light clothing. Helmet, obviously, and I did play with gloves because getting hit, like, man, I, I had, like, one of my knuckles half, like, ripped off once by a paintball. It was very unpleasant. Um, but I would play in as light gear as possible because, from my point of view, the entire reason that paintball hurts is because it changes the gameplay dynamic. If I wanted to play video games where there's no consequences, I would play video games. If I wanted to just run around and meme... Well, I could play laser tag, but what's great about paintball is it f***ing hurts, right? And so the, the risk and the reward are both elevated so much compared to other games. Like, man, you ever, um, like get around behind enemy lines and like, you know, manage to get within range, like pop a couple people from like 15 feet away. No, I'm bad. Oh yeah. No, I'm, I'm immediately out. Oh, all right. Well, I was pretty good at it. Um, and that was that was like absolutely my favorite thing. I loved to flank. And uh, I believe that's called masochism. No, because it, it like it's it's OK. 
That's not the point. I don't I don't actually enjoy the pain and I don't enjoy inflicting pain, but I enjoy playing a game with real consequences because it totally changes people's behavior. You don't just have people like running into running into fire and you're Leroy Jenkins. Like you don't deal with that. People are actually trying to play smart. And it's so much more satisfying to outplay smart someone than it is to you just have the other team be memeing and the beep, 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 you know, you're just like pelting them with little pieces of plastic or whatever. Um, that's not sadism. My goodness. I think you guys are, I think you guys are trying to turn this into something that it's not. I'm just saying it's more fun with real consequences. That's all. Man. Okay. You need skin in the game to take it seriously, and that's more fun. Yes, the Bitman. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. Exactly what I'm trying to say. See, the headset's just cool because Sword on Online is cool. Like, you want to have that risk just because your favorite anime character did, you know? Uh, Dark24 says that makes it not a game. The point is that there are no IRL consequences. That's not true at all. Mm. The world is full of games with in real life consequences. Like, like prizes, money, and like injuries in professional sports. Like, no, the world is the world is full of games that have real world consequences. Absolutely. Uh, Hydrox seven seventy seven says a lot of people who aren't athletes might not understand this. I think it's just a competitive mindset. Like, it's no secret that I am a hyper hyper competitive person. It's not something that I do on purpose, but no matter what I'm doing, uh, Luke made an offhand comment to me years ago. He goes like. Man, I don't think I've ever seen anything that you're not like halfway decent at. And it's because I try like freaking hard. Like if I'm going to do anything, I'm going to do it as hard as I possibly can. And so I like I try to improve really fast. I hate losing. And that's not to say that I'll never put myself in a position to lose. Losing can be fun, but I love to compete and especially love to win. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just a uh, fine. Fine, maybe it's just a thing that people can't relate to. So I guess we can I guess we can move on. What else do you want to talk about? Should we talk about the G Cloud review sample? Why don't you give me your take on it? Have you seen the G Cloud? Yes. So it's interesting. I probably if this had been announced when the Steam Deck was really early, I'd actually probably be supporting of it more. You're new here, so I gotta forgive you for the people you gotta recap for the people who don't know what the G Cloud is a little bit before you give your time. I'm actually shocked people don't know what the G Cloud is. It's changing the tech world. It is taking over by storm. So on the screen there, the G Cloud is a handheld device like the Steam Deck, but it only does cloud based uh like streaming platforms like GeForce or uh, I don't know if it does Game Pass or whatever else, or if it's literally just... Yeah, Xbox Game Pass, Game Pass and GeForce Now. Yep. So you have to be connected to the internet at all times, so like, why be handheld? But the Steam Deck, <laughs> in its early days, the offline mode sucked. So I'd go to use it, and games just wouldn't work because they required updates or whatever like that, and it would just be bricked. But now the Steam Deck is great, and the Aya Neos are great. But expensive. Yes. So why would you get something if you have to be around all the time? You could just use your phone. Just buy a $50... Razor, uh, Karashi, I can't remember what the handheld. Shinsei or something like that. And then you have your 5G connection anyways, instead of hotspotting to use this. Kishi. Or you're just at home and Samsung TVs have Game Pass and GeForce now built in anyways. So who is this? Who is this for? They've waited too long. Yeah. Um, okay. So here's what happened. Um, Logitech reached out. Uh, about potentially working together uh, to to do like some 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 sponsorships or some advertising with us around this product, and uh, rightfully they expressed some concern that I hate it and therefore would not be willing and or able to talk about its benefits fairly. Um, I think that's I think that's uh, that's a smart thing for for Logitech to be concerned about, but. I actually think that they might have gotten the wrong idea from the previous times that I've talked about it. I don't hate cloud or um, like network-based gaming at all. In fact, if you go back far enough, was there anyone, and I mean anyone, on the face of the entire earth who beat the drum harder for Steam in home streaming, 
uh, man, I forget what NVIDIA even used to call it, but the original NVIDIA Shield, okay, which was a like a, a mobile processor Android device predominantly designed for streaming PC games to your to your mobile. Was there anyone who beat the drum harder for that technology than I did? I don't think so. I'm super into it. It's super cool. It's amazing technology. Was it remote play? I know, yeah, I know they call it grid or something like that at, at some point. Um, no, no, Moonshadow, people are trying to remember what it was called. Yeah, Moonshadow was a different thing. That was like a third-party app that used the same NVIDIA encoder, but it wasn't like the first-party one that ran on the NVIDIA Shield specifically. Um, for me, the main concern with the G Cloud is that it's up against a competing device that can also be used for remote play, uh, but that has a powerful PC inside it. However, there are still ways that the G Cloud could justify itself, and some of them I've talked about before, but some of them I haven't. Uh, GeForce Now Gaming, apparently, or Game Stream. No, Game Stream seems. I think it's Game Stream. Anyway, anyway, the point is, some of the ways that it could justify itself I've talked about before. If, for example, the controls, like if the ergonomics of it are significantly better than the Steam Deck, I could see that being a reason to have one of these. And they wouldn't even need to be amazing to be better than the Steam Deck. Steam Deck's heavy, man. It's heavy. Another way it could justify itself is great battery life. I haven't seen the battery life. I don't know what the battery life is of the G Cloud, but the Steam Deck, mm, around a couple of hours, if you're actually playing games locally on the device, and you might get, what, three and a half or four? If yeah, you're it's not strong. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not great. So that's one of the drawbacks of having a powerful PC in your handheld instead of using mobile hardware in a handheld. Um, okay, that's it. Pricing, it could also justify itself. So we'd, we'd have to see what kind of pricing Logitech is planning in the future. Um, so I, I guess what, I, what I'm saying is it, one is coming and I'm going to get a chance to try it in person and basically we'll decide how to proceed from there. Um, but as a happy Steam Deck customer, would you consider the G Cloud? No, I love my Steam Deck. I don't like the battery life. Like we've done a few travel projects and having to stop playing, you know, the first third of a flight or plug it in really sucked, but it is truly like amazing. I'm playing Fallout 4 with mods and it looks great and runs smoothly. Like I can't, I can't give that up to go on airplane Wi-Fi and stream via GeForce, hoping that it works well. I'd rather just carry on a battery pack or wait for, for Gen 2 or, you know, I feel like Steam would even, or Valve would even release just upgrade kits for your Steam Deck. So I feel like that is a more solid uh, investment at this point, um, especially at its price point. It seems like a, a no-brainer. DeviantArt reminds us that great artists steal. Uh, this particular topic was provided by Jonathan Horst. Uh, they, uh, oh, they tweeted the release of, man, this is... Kind of wild. Their new AI tools and controls. Uh, Dream up a new tool to generate art. Uh, control the amount of AI art in your feed. Clear labeling of art that's AI generated. Uh, directive to opt out of AI data sets and the ability to opt out of prompts. So pretty much uh, their, their plan for how to address AI art going forward. Uh, there's a man. Wow. Okay. So they, you can output computer-generated images from a detailed prompt using the Stable Diffusion model. And DeviantArt account holders will get five free prompts with more included in the site's core subscription plan. They've got a gallery of outputs that people can take a look through. Oh, dang it, you have to log in for this? Uh, oh, no, you do not. You can just say, no, I do not wish to do that. Uh, I can't tell if I have actual... No, this is just their homepage. Dang it, you guys. Ugh. All right. Well, apparently I can't find that, so that's annoying. But there's a gallery somewhere. Uh, this one is apparently generated from Sunny Day in Canada. Wow, that's really impressive. I'd believe that's a Sunny Day in Canada. Oh, 100%. That's super cool. Oh, Dream Up Collection. Okay, can we... No, of course I can't click that. Why would I be able to click that? That would be just too... That would be too convenient. All right, fine, whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, that, what do I know about interface anyway? Um, DeviantArt also published their stance on AI art. So they said artists should be able to tell third-party AI datasets not to use their content. Artists should be able to choose whether 
or not AI images can be generated in their style. If an artist isn't opted out and their style is referenced in a prompt, they should be clearly credited. AI images should be clearly marked as such. Viewers should have control over how much AI art they see. AI should not be used for abusive or hateful content. And they said they're not ready for monetization. For artists who want to opt out, it appears that when they upload a work, there's a checkbox you can click to not authorize for AI datasets, though it can be edited on existing deviations. Um, later, they plan on adding a way to flag all deviations uploaded to a profile. Uh, Anthony had a note here. Everyone should be able to opt out regardless. Yeah, uh, but only some can opt out globally and only by filling out a Google form with a 10 business day lead time. Yeah, okay, so that's interesting. Our discussion question is, how is this good versus how is this bad for artists? I think that regardless of how good or bad it is for artists, this stuff is happening. AI art is not going away anytime soon. Yeah, that's interesting, the uh, generating art in people's style. How do you even prove... Like, I feel like they could back up and be like, no, it's just someone else's style that looks like yours, let alone that's such an interesting feature to yeah, or, choose to implement. Or just happen by accident. Sorry, man, I don't, I, I don't know. Yeah, how do they police that? And especially the accreditation, again, how do they police that unless it's like a watermark on the photo? Uh, but that just seems so messy. Oh, they apparently backpedaled a bit and said that people will be opted out automatically. Hmm. I don't remember the last time I ended up on DeviantArt, though, to be perfectly honest with you. I don't, I don't, I, I'm not saying they're not relevant. I'm just saying that as, you know, not an artist, I, I don't know that they are relevant. Yeah, and Omni Owl says you have to opt out per picture. So you can't just opt out, like, all of your art. <laughs> you would have to, like, select what art you don't want to allow. I don't know. But... You know what I would never opt out of? Replying to merch messages. Why don't we hit some merch messages here, Mr. Bellevance? I would love to. First one I have here is from Ben. Have you considered doing a follow-up to the cardboard PC challenge? I recently rewatched it and would love a follow-up potentially with different materials. Yes. The main difference between the next cardboard PC case challenge and the last one is that we're going to provide the teams with more time. I think last time we did two hours and the goal this time around is to either do four or a full day giving us time to really lay out a plan and try to execute it. I think that uh, that will give me far less of an advantage than last time. Um, because if Team Alex had actually had time, I think they have the skills to make a much better case than what I would be able to put together. But because Jake and I were smart enough to allocate enough of our time to actually planning our folds and planning our case, we came out ahead of their kind of YOLO approach. Whereas if you give them more time and they know that they can plan, I think Alex and uh, I forget who was on Alex's team. Uh, but I think that they would be able to mm, beat us, but I'm super down. I'm super down for a rematch and the video performed well. So that's always a, a good sign for getting another, uh, getting a sequel to it. Next question here is from Bryce. Are there any weird or random requests they can think of from sponsors, hard mode, D-Brand doesn't count. Weird requests. I mean, Fractal back in the day used to do some really weird stuff. They had me get pied in the face. Um, weird requests from sponsors. I, most, most sponsors are not that outside the box thinking, to be honest with you. And I'd be, Bell, you worked on the business team. Like, mm -hmm. can you think of anything? It's mostly D-Brand. But I love the wholesome, is it Seasonic that just does a Merry Christmas? There's no talking points or anything. It's just yeah, we've done that a couple say Merry times. Christmas. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, most, I mean, they want to make sure you know what the product is, which means that you're pretty limited on how weird things can get. Uh, but I did like dbrand's recent one of etching in the iPad, shortlinus.com. So we have an etched iPad that is, we'll always say shortlinus.com. Oh, good. <laughs> That's helpful. Uh, question here from Anon. Uh, hi, Linus. Are you going to make sure your kid's not a touch type? On a similar note, how do you feel about younger generations maybe being less digitally literate? Uh, my son already touch types. Um, my eldest daughter is already learning. They they do typing class in school, so theoretically, I shouldn't really have to intervene. Um, I mean, realistically, they're both picking it up for the same reasons that I did, gaming. Uh, they They love Minecraft, and you just... You can't look away from the screen, so you better learn to touch type. That's that's the bottom line. Yeah, so they at least know where Wasat is, and that is important. 
Um, okay, so this was a question for Luke, but it'd be interesting to hear your answer. This is from Jesse. If the roles had been reversed back in the day and Luke was the higher up, would he have hired you for Luke Tech Tips? I think I'm pretty good. I think I'm pretty good at what I do. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think so. I don't know. Well, maybe we might have to ask him again next week, but uh, yeah, I, I, th I think he would. My, my skills complement his pretty well. <laughs> He's thinking about it. <laughs> uh, question here from Matthew. What's going on with video aspect ratios these days? Some traditional TV shows, Netflix shows, and YouTube channels, including LTT, are an 18 by 9. It seems objectively worse. Over 11% of my screen is now blank. Why the change? Ah, that's a good question. We went from 16 by 9 to 18 by 9, also known as 2 to 1, a few years back, I think. Quite a while. And the rationale behind it was that our viewership had gone to predominantly mobile, and mobile devices were starting to ship in these aspect ratios that were much wider than 16 by 9. Like, you, can, you can't find a 16 by 9 smartphone anymore, pretty much. So with that in mind, now that we had these, these long devices, if the majority of our audience was going to be watching on mobile, uh, we, we didn't want to leave them with just giant black pillars on either side of their screen. However, if we went all the way to the, like, you know, there are some smartphones that have super, super tall displays. So if we went all the way widescreen, you know, almost like a, like a cinema aspect ratio, well, then that would leave really, really thick black bars on our desktop viewers' screens. So we ended up going with uh, what we felt was a happy medium, two to one, which leaves small black bars on a desktop monitor and small black pillars on the majority of smartphones. Hmm. Question here from Brad. Howdy from Texas. Would you ever consider going on hot ones? How are you with spicy foods in general? I'm all right with spicy food. Um, I generally don't eat super, super spicy food because uh, my mouth likes it, but the other parts of me are not as into it. Um, as for what I consider go going on hot ones, I mean, it's one of those things where there's nothing to consider if um, I haven't been invited. So <laughs> I don't know, maybe, sure, or maybe not. Uh, or, oh, hold on. I don't want to. I don't want to say that. Like I'm putting them on the spot. Maybe they. Maybe they did invite me at some point. No, let's put them on the spot. Sean Evans, hit us up. Whoa, whoa, hold, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I uh, uh, just, uh, just a second. I'm. I might have been invited at some point. Um. Oh come on! I swear, Gmail search just keeps getting worse. Oh yeah, hold on. Oh, no, wait, this is from Workcation. We did our own Hot Ones thing. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, no, I don't think, yeah, no, I don't, I don't think I've been invited to Hot Ones. So there, it's, uh, oh, oh, you know what I did find is my favorite tweet of all time, though. This is my favorite tweet of all time. Twitter is the only place where well-articulated sentences still get misinterpreted. You can say, I like pancakes, and somebody will say, so you hate waffles? No, that's a whole new sentence. What the f is you talking about? I love it. It's, it's the entire platform in a nutshell, 100% my favorite tweet of all time. And it was uh, when I was talking about something on the WAN show and people, we, we, whole different thing. I think it was the paintball conversation. It's the best. All right. Uh, next question from Anon. While gaming using multiple mo monitors, do you require significantly more VRAM? Is there a rule of thumb for how much VRAM works for the works best for a given resolution? Um, no and no. There can be buggy behavior when you're gaming with multiple monitors attached to your GPU. Uh, yeah, I've seen everything from like standby not working properly to lower performance, uh, but theoretically, no. Uh, it should only be the game assets that are being loaded into VRAM that is um, taking it up. And as for how much works at a given resolution, well, it depends on the uh, the size of the quality of the textures. Question here from Lucas. How are your AirPods Pros 2s holding up? Would you still recommend them to Android users? Great. Um, 
I mean, uh, I don't know that I recommend them to Android users. There's absolutely problems using AirPods on Android. Like, it's, you know, not having first-party battery monitoring and stuff like that. Like, it's just a guess when I put them in my ears whether they're charged or not. So I just have to stay on top of it. Otherwise, I'll just, I'll go and put them in my ears. Oh, they're dead. Great. This is fantastic. They're the world's most expensive earplugs, right? So, um... I still like them, and I haven't found a complete replacement for them. I found things that do certain aspects of what I love about the AirPods as well or better, but I have yet to find something that completely replaces the AirPods for me. Yeah, AirPods are, are pretty great, but I use iPhone, so I'm biased. Question here from Patrick. With the move towards all electric cards cars is there any real fear of them becoming a massive amount of e-waste with the cost of replacing a battery later in the car's lifespan absolutely i mean that's that's one of the biggest challenges that faces the electric car industry and you hear a lot of people talk about well the batteries are recyclable are they though at the at the scale that we need them to be recyclable at what efficiency rate who's actually working on this is it commercially viable there's still a lot of questions about electric car battery recycling and repurposing and yeah, it's a, it's a huge concern. It's one of the things I love about the Chevy Volt so much. Man, I think it's so stupid they discontinued that car. It is a technological marvel. It's so cool. And while it is sort of the worst of both worlds in that it has, uh, it gives up the reliability of an all-electric car, like the simplicity of an all-electric car, and also, you know, gives up the, the cost benefit of, uh, of, um, an internal combustion engine car because it has to be loaded with electric motors and like a whole you know battery pack and stuff um it also has the benefits of both worlds i do the vast majority of my driving on this much smaller battery that required far less lithium to be mined and if i do need to go far boop, turn on the gas powered generator and off i go can hardly tell the difference when i'm operating it i think that plug-in hybrids ugh, a, they weren't marketed very well in the first place, particularly by Chevy's dealer network. And B, uh, a lot of them gave that label a, a bad name because plug-in hybrids like the Prius Prime that only have like 30 kilometers, 30, 40 kilometers of range at best, um, they're, they're not useful in the same way that the Volt is. It'll do like 70 to 90 kilometers on battery. That's outstanding. That's to and from even a pretty substantial commute. Um, so you're, you're actually not using gas. And so I'm, it's very frustrating to me that that, that category of vehicles just kind of, uh, was underappreciated for so long that the Volt got killed, uh, when it could have been a great solution to, uh, burning far less fossil fuels, but also mining far less lithium. Yeah. And there's still decent ways of recycling car batteries, but I mean, at this point, we don't have a ton of aged EV batteries to do a bunch of testing on, and a lot of it's expensive. And will it actually be recycled? They're all questions that haven't been answered yet. Yep. Next question here is from Crispy Umbrella. Do you have any thoughts on Mastodon as a decentralized Twitter alternative? I saw you guys talking about it earlier, and the reason that I didn't really get into it is because I haven't looked into it. Um, it seems like on the surface, there could be a lot of really cool things about it. I've seen it described as kind of the Linux of, of social platforms. So there are some things that are a little arcane, a little difficult to, to, to navigate, um, or a little unintuitive, but it's not something that I have actually invested any time in. That's something that you'll you'll see from me, it's pretty normal when it comes to new platforms to, to sort of put your brand on. I tend to be extremely slow moving. Like I never invested any time in Vine or Periscope. That worked out great for me. Uh, pretty much everything I've picked historically has gone on for a very, very long time. And so I'm, I, I, I'm just, I'm in wait and see mode. We might try to have a presence on Mastodon at some point, but that might not happen until Twitter actually implodes. Uh, with that said, Twitter might implode a lot faster than I thought it was going to. So we'll see. We have a lot of questions about merch. So I'm going to kind of generalize a lot of them. Do you have any updates on any fun merch products you want to share or spoil? There's people asking about windbreakers or sun shirts. Uh, we have a windbreaker coming. 
um, the 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 oh oh the UV hoodie. So the UV blocking hoodie is amazing. Okay, I took our first like our first sample prototype on my trip to Hawaii, and it rocked. Like so breathable, the lightest breeze goes right through it, but it keeps the sun off. Um, so it helped me avoid getting. Never mind burned. I barely even tanned while I was there. Uh, so it was awesome for that. And I went swimming in it, not one, not two, not three, but four times. And it still didn't stink because it's using like, a, like it's got bamboo in the fabric, which has really great antimicrobial properties and stuff like that. So you swam in a jacket. Well, I was I was wearing it when I just like would like go wading in the ocean with the kids. Uh, we went parasailing. And they dipped us at the end, and I was wearing it during that. Like, like it just it got wet uh, four times. Once was rain, once wasn't swimming, uh, but it got wet four times, and I still like picked it up and like this is wearable. This is amazing. I'm super stoked. Yeah, that is uh, not what I expected that to end with, but you know, it's good to know this is a hoodie or jacket you can swim in. Well, uh. no, that's not the point. <laughs> Uh, a question here from Anon. Has a team ever considered benchmarking VR games like Half-Life Alex or Medal of Honor? I think VR has a lot of potential in the hopefully not too long future and having performance data on it would be quite interesting. Uh, it's something we do want to look into and learn about, um, but it's something that is very, very, very challenging. Pretty much every VR game that I'm aware of dynamically scales its quality depending on the performance of your GPU. So then if you can't fix the the load, right, the the game, the 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 demandingness of the game, how can you possibly measure the relative performance of the hardware running it? So that's one of the reasons that VR benchmarking is pretty much not a thing. Like nobody really does it because you can't compare it unless you're using uh, machine vision to compare the relative downgrading of the quality. Next question here is from Anon. What is your opinion on employee monitoring software? Um, I would I would like to imagine that we would never feel like we needed something like that. I think if you have an employee that you feel like you need to monitor that closely, then a better place for them might be another company. Um, you know, one of my core principles is that I never want to, I never want to beg anyone to be here. You know, like I only want people here who want to be here. So if they are not wanting to be here enough that their performance is a problem to the point where we have to put big brother software on their computer, then I think that they might just, it might just be time for them to move on. Next question here is from Hollis. How many countries have you been to? I don't know. I, I could I could try and list them, but that would be extremely boring content. <laughs> At least 10. Okay, sure, I'll try. Canada, USA, Mexico. Haven't been anywhere in South America yet. I have not touched the South American continent. Uh, but we'll move over to Asia, where I have been to Singapore, Malaysia, um, Brunei, uh, Thailand, um, uh, China, Japan, Taiwan. Yeah, you saw it. Uh, then if we move over to Europe, I have been to France, Germany, the UK, never Spain, um, Belgium, is Luxembourg a country? I don't think so. Oh, Italy, Greece. So we're at 21 now, I think. Vatican City, I think, is technically a country, though. Yes. City state. So I've been there. So it's 22. Um, I think that's it. 22. I've, I've never set foot in Africa, never set foot in Australia. I think Luxembourg is a country. Everyone's making fun of the Canadian education system now. Well, I, 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 I thought it was. Clearly we you need told to, me no. I need to go, clearly. I actually don't think I've ever been to Luxembourg anyway. I can't remember. <laughs> uh, oh, but did I say Belgium, though? Been to Belgium. A country so nice, you named it twice. 
<laughs> Rip Luxembourg is a country. Oh, wait, yeah, I've been to Korea. Sorry. Yep, yep, been to Korea as well. South Korea, not North Korea. I saw North Korea. I, I saw the fence. <laughs> <laughs> looked looked out upon North Korea. Oh, Israel. Forgot about Israel. Yes, been to Israel as well. Uh, man, you guys, you guys know better than me. Uh, no, I did not go to DreamHack Sweden. Apparently our green screen worked even better than I thought. No, that was nonsense. I was not there. I was on a green screen. Oh, that's hilarious. Um, I've been to Texas. Well, what? They think of themselves as their own country, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I guess there. you've been to Alberta too. Yeah, I've been to Alberta. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, people are people are making jokes already in float plane chat. Been to Quebec? Yeah, yeah, I've been to Quebec too. <laughs> yeah, so I guess about twenty five. About twenty five. That's a lot of countries. Yeah, it's pretty good, right? I think I I'm doing pretty good. I don't know how many countries there are, but I'm sure that's a lot of them. The thing though is, I have hardly seen any of it. Like it's it's typically airport to hotel to shoot to hotel to airport to leave. Like when, when I went to Germany one time, I forget what the actual number was, but it was obscene. Like from my doorstep back to my doorstep, including a video shoot while I was gone. It was something like 56 hours or something like that. Mm -hmm. And when you consider how much of that is on the plane and sleeping and working, like it was madness, absolute madness. Uh, that was one of my tightest ones. I'd have to go back and I'd have to go back and like find my ticket to Germany or something like that. But it was ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. All right. Next one here. If you had to work for a big tech company, which Ooh. would you choose? Man, I don't know if I could work for anybody anymore. I, I realized this watching a behind the scenes on float plane. Uh, did you watch the one with the, um, for the intro to the Starforge systems build with uh, the with the Escalade. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I was watching that, and nobody else, nobody really called me on it or or criticized it or anything like that. But I was watching it, and what I realized is I ask a lot less these days than I used to, and I tell a lot more, and. I'm, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna apologize for it. It's, it's part of, it's part of managing a team of people and, and getting things done. But I, I, I definitely tend to say, okay, you over there, you over there, do that. Let's go. Like, I, and, and I think part of that is just being a busy person and having to get things done. And I'm, it's not like I, I don't, I don't think, you know, I was just, I, I was watching myself from kind of like an outside perspective, right? And I. I didn't think I was rude or disrespectful or, or anything like that, but I have definitely grown accustomed to being in charge. And I just don't know how I, I don't know how I would handle it anymore. Um, I think that, I think that it could be really cool. I, I don't think I would like to work in total secrecy. I think the way that Apple um, sort of obfuscates what people are working on is super uncool. I don't really understand why people tolerate that because um, the only reason for Apple to do that is so that they can hide away that you work at Apple and the cool stuff that you're doing so that you're not as poachable, which is like, F you. Um, it's just about the only response I can think of to that. There's there's definitely more transparent companies. I think some of the skunk work stuff that they do at a place like Google is pretty sick. Like what are the other what are the other big big tech companies? I would have absolutely nothing to contribute to someone like a Netflix. I have no traditional production experience. And Fang, so you got Facebook. I don't, I don't see how I would. Well, even if you lower the stakes to like ASUS, EVGA. Oh, oh, I, like IT. You know, I think it'd be kind of fun to work for Silverstone. That's a company that does a lot of cool stuff, but has absolutely no idea whatsoever how to market themselves themselves. And I think that I could be really good in a role like that. Um, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Silverstone. Yeah, Silverstone's pretty chill. I feel like we're almost big tech now. We're almost there. You no, don't we're have to. not. <laughs> We've got 80 people, not 8,000 people. <laughs> Give it a year or two. You know what? That project I did down at Supermicro was really fun. They seem pretty cool. Mm. Uh, next question here is from Tristan. What sites or services do you miss from years past that aren't around anymore, like Vine with Twitter? 
Oh man, I talked about this in my in my Met Metaverse Quest Pro video. Mm. The Palace. I actually had the founder of the Palace reach out on Twitter. Uh, confirmed that there is no VR Palace coming, but the Palace was basically Habbo Hotel before Habbo Hotel was a thing. It's kind of like a graphical uh, IRC, graphical chat room. And it had a lot of the same features that like a metaverse VR chat style thing might have, where you can only talk to people who are near you. So you could whisper to each other, you could broadcast to a small group around you. So you would actually like move around in rooms to be near people who are talking about the same things you might want to talk about. Uh, but I, yeah, I spent a ton of my ton of my youth on the palace. Um, MSN Messenger is another huge one. I don't know what it was. I, I would use it again today. It's just it's so much better than a lot of the chat apps that we have now. And it was so far ahead of its time. Like the ability to, even the ability to uh, turn on a webcam, like ha have video in your chat was like really cool at the time. There might've been something that did it first, but MSN did it pretty well. Um, there's a super, man, when you used to be able to have like custom animated, um, I guess they would be emoticons, not emojis. Uh, or which one's which, I can never remember. But the point is there was this super cool one that was like a little a little smiley face and an unsuspecting pink smiley face. And he comes up and he goes like this and then gives it a hug. And then there's like a little heart. Like they, it, there was just like really fun ways to express yourself that, you know, I you know, there are really fun ways to express yourselves now. Like you couldn't send each other GIFs back in the day. Uh, but uh, maybe we could actually, I'm trying to remember. Uh, but it had fun ways to express yourself that, I feel like if you brought them back, uh, might seem innovative and seem novel today. Yeah, I miss nudging people, just shaking that window violently. Yeah, uh, <laughs> like, hey, are you still there? <laughs> and just abusing that whenever possible. Yeah. Oh, you could, and then they turned on the ability to disable to disable nudges. Mm -hmm. Like it just, man, it was so feature complete. The ability to go offline mode, offline to certain oh, people. Pure offline was amazing. Like, man, yeah, I remember when uh, pure offline was such a, such an innovation. Um, okay, emoticons are made of letters or symbols. Emoji are the ones that are little pictures, but it's animated, animated emojis. So whatever, whatever that. Yeah, meant. it's like pre Discord. You could like upload your own. Uh, well, yeah, it was cool. Yeah, it was awesome, man. I would use the crap out of just them bringing back MSN Messenger. Mm -hmm. My choice with no further explanation is just Toontown. Bring back Toontown. Toontown. The like Disney MMO. Isn't that still a life. thing? Well, there was. I think they got cease and desist. Uh, really? Because they like, it was, I can't remember what they called it, but it was like a revamped one. No, Toontown rewritten. Hold on a second. Oh, looks like you're new here. Uh... <laughs> I want to leave. What a choice. I want to leave. Toontown is completely free. Oh, wow. So they actually, they didn't get a season assist. That's amazing. Wait. Oh. Go to Did Disney you click I want to leave? <laughs> what? Yeah, it sounds good. Disney's Toontown Online created using publicly available downloads and information. Blah, blah, blah. You understand it is not affiliated with the Walt Disney Company or Disney Interactive Group. Sure. Okay. Toontown rewritten. Wow. Here it is. That's amazing. I remember throwing pies at people. Uh, like it was, it was a great game. Oh man, I never just played walking it. around. Uh, there was a really cool tank game that I've talked about on Wan Show before, but no one's ever been able to tell me what it was called. Uh, but it was like a top-down tank game that you would spawn in completely like fresh. It had permadeath, hmm. which was really cool. So you would come in. And uh, I forget if it was like mouse based movement, but going from one area to another was like a complete sort of reload. So you would go to the edge of the screen and you would go, you would appear at the bottom of like the next screen and you would level up by defeating other tanks and get more and more powerful. But death was permanent. So if you were like leveled up to level four or whatever and walked into two level threes that messed you up, that was it. You were dead. And I just don't remember what it was called tank trouble people are saying no it was not called tank trouble for sure um was it just called tanks it was just tanks the flash game hold on are you gonna be able to google that just google i don't know tank flash game um scorched earth no no it wasn't pocket tanks no pocket tanks is side side view it was top down Uh, I don't see, I don't think it's tanks. I don't, I don't see anything here that looks like the right thing. Oh, 
No. Tanky online. I would say the closest looking thing that I've seen so far. This is apparently called World of Tanks for Sega Genesis, but the tanks looked more cartoony. So that's that's definitely not it. it was not 3D like this. Uh, it was it was very very 2D. Yeah, I just I've I've never been able to find it again. I swear it was pretty big. Like lots of people were playing it. So I don't really I don't really know why it's so hard to find. No, it wasn't on Wii, guys. It's a browser game. It was on PC. Yeah, a lot of people remember it, but just don't know the name. Oh, really? Yeah, a lot of people are saying I remember and they're trying to <laughs> trying to name it. Yeah, I just completely don't remember what it was called. Like it was kind of like this. But that's definitely not it. Uh, the tanks were more kind of like, I think they were like more rounded looking, like kind of cartoony. I know that when you when you shot, when you shot at people, it was like there was like a cooldown. Like it wasn't just however fast you could press the space bar or whatever. Um, it, bubble tanks, is that it? What's bubble tanks? No, 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 no. Oh, not crazy. even, yeah, not even close. <laughs> No wrong answers except for that one. What's a bolo tank game? That doesn't sound familiar. Um, Battle City? No, no, it's nothing like that. It was 2D. It was a web game, guys. It was a web game. Yeah, I don't know. It's so frustrating. Like, it's, it seems to have completely disappeared from our collective consciousness. Like, doesn't exist anymore. Battle City? No. Nope, it was uh, browser based, guys. Browser based. It's Look not. How many tank games there are? This is wild. We I love... know. Humans right? love tanks. Don't they? <laughs> uh, no, not this. Yeah, it's it's none of Someone these. Someone suggested a mini golf game. I don't think that's it. Yeah, I, I really don't think that's it. Pocket Tanks is super cool. That is another game that I really enjoyed. Um, Yvonne and I used to play that all the time. Just like having like a do nothing day um just like playing pocket tanks hmm. uh, was it on penny arcade no i don't think so tank tips i wouldn't know though i didn't really like follow them closely or anything this uh, is ps2 that's not a good start battle tank shock so you can destroy a game well no this says ps2 yeah no guys <laughs> so you can destroy game. oh did i already search for this one no, not seek and destroy. Man, we are not gonna we're not gonna find this. Tank cannons? Are you guys just making things up? <laughs> Someone said try Bing. <laughs> That's probably the it's the Google suppression. Yeah, you know, it's actually not a terrible idea. Cause sometimes it's not like suppression, but Google just ends up in like uh, hey, this is the most likely thing. So uh all right, let's go. Uh top down browser tank game early 2000s okay there let's give this as much help i'm um, an old 3d flash game was probably blah, blah. from what i remember is a 3d tank game where you needed to take consumable hold on a second where you needed to take consumable ammo shield health speed damage buff and your tank changed color depending on what you had basic tank shell and artillery sort of direct hit online game with no bots at all you had rank and depending on okay this the game was 100% multiplayer online on a web browser. I think this person is looking for the same game. Oh, no. They say it was a realistic looking game. Mm, no. Uh, oh, no, no. It wasn't... Eh, no, it wasn't three-dimensional. No, nope, never mind. They're probably looking for a different thing. Oh, well, that was worth a shot. Okay, let's go back to Bing. Uh, let's, uh, let's see. Images. What are the odds here? No, I don't see it. It's not Battle City. No, no, no. Yeah, I, I, I think I've given up. Mm. I don't think I am ever going to find this, which is just wild to me because I know a lot of other people played it because I would go on any time, night or day, and it would be absolutely full of people playing okay, it. Okay, this looks like it could be. Is it Tank Pit? I don't think so. That doesn't sound familiar. In one word? Tank Pit. The graphics, I mean, it just looks older, kind of scrolly. Tank pit. Hold on. <gasps> Wait, is this it? This might be it. 
Is it Tank Pit? Multiplayer Hold on. tank game. Okay, can I please see a higher... Can I please see a bigger image? <laughs> Hello? Oh, that's got an uh, imager gallery. Yeah. Hold on. Did we find it? Is it a jackal? Jackal? <laughs> is it a jackal? <gasps> I think this is it. Yes. Wow, shout out chat. Who, who got it? Uh, a lot of people commented at once. So I'm not sure. I think the first one I saw was from... Da, 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 washi. This is hilarious. Yeah, this is totally it. Um, An old game back to reality. Wait a second. Is it back? Can you actually play it? Whoa. Whoa. This, this site's going down. Let me tell you. <laughs> oh, don't be like that. Don't be like that. Wait, it's going to get hugged. Don't be like that. Uh, okay, we're definitely going purple. No way. Oh, yeah, this is totally it. This is a double shot. This is a missile. Oh, oh, okay. I guess I'm not impressing you guys if it says right here, but yes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, buddy. People buddy. are joining in. Buddy. Yo, let's go. Wow, you even got like chat there. The little auto. Like the be right there. Base is here. Blow up mines. Okay, how long do you have to wait to move? It's like kind of oh, turn-based, turn -based. I think. Yeah. Um... Okay, am I, am I, is this even like accepting? Okay, all you guys are. Yeah, I think it's going to get. Jumping into tank pit slowed. here. Extend view W. Hold on, what is happening? Game here? is full, people are saying. Oh, seriously? Oh, that's hilarious. Okay, what's, what's scope? Scope? Uh, okay, I have no idea what's going on. Oh, hey, this guy. Oh, jerk. Okay, okay, mouse movement. Waiting for move. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's kind of turn-based. This is crazy! We finally found it! Okay, I think I can blow up that mine. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See you later, mine. Boom! Got him! Tip. Missile shots can fly over rocks. Okay, I think those yellow things are fuel. Okay, double shot. Boom. Wow, I am so proud of this community. Missile shot. Came together Let's and go. We found this. That is beautiful. Did that, did that actually missile shot? I can't tell. What's the yellow one do? Oh, a homing shot. Tanky hit you. Tanky hit you again. Oh. Tanky's destroying you right now. Yeah, Tanky is... Um, tanky OP. Better than me. Okay, what if we move? Can we move? Oh, waiting for move. Oh, yeah, he missed. See you later, buddy. Now let's move again. Boom, what are you going to do? Oh, yeah, got him. Boom. I have no idea how much health he has, so... At least do some low damage. Uh, did I move or not? Oh, oh, waiting for move. Yeah, I think I'm about to get um, noob pwned here. Oh, come on. It's not registering my clicks. It's not registering my clicks. Come on, let's get him, get him. Oh, oh no. This red guy showed up. Ah. Oh. All right. Hey, thank you so much, guys. I'm going to spend some time reliving my <laughs> childhood over there, all right? Wow. Awesome. Um... Okay, I guess we got some more merch messages to get through here. <laughs> yeah, we sure do. That one took a minute. <laughs> uh, question here from Anon. Do you think we'll see a video around the recently launched More Threads video cards if you can get your hands on them? More Threads? I do not know what you're talking about. Yeah, I looked it up. It is kind of interesting. More Threads. Hello. Infinite power to power the infinity. <laughs> Wow. That's a catchphrase. I mean, yeah, if I can get my hands on it, I'd love to, but we've had a heck of a time getting our hands on like weird Chinese GPUs and just like weird Chinese tech in general in the past. PCIe Gen 5? What am I even looking at here? 16 gigs GDDR6? I mean, theoretically, this is like, okay. I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll send this over to Andy. If we can, if we can get something from China, uh, Andy's usually my guy. Uh, next one here from PZ. Can you give some more relationship advice? I remember mentioning that you and your wife commit not to go into bed angry or sad, and it was really helpful. Um, oh man, that's tough. Uh, hold on. I got to send this yeah, to Andy real quick. you can't send Andy a message and think of that. Um, I don't know. I, 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 I kind of put me on the spot here. If you're asking something specific, then, you know, I'd be happy to, but it's not like we have all of the answers. I think that, um, I don't know, I had a really good bit of advice for someone recently, so maybe I'll just reiterate that one. 
uh, Buddy was asking, like, my my wife or SO or whatever always insists that I not buy her stuff, but, you know, I really like giving gifts. So, like, what should I buy her? And I was like, you should listen to her. And they followed me, uh, followed up with me later. They were like, that was really good advice. And I was like, yeah. So that's that's a good one. Listen to your wife. Yeah. That's a good tip. Yeah. Yeah, for real, though. You know, a lot of what people need in a relationship, they're telling you, you know, you just got to, you got to, you got to engage with people on their own terms. I had the funniest exchange with Luke the other day. Um, I saw a notification for like his birthday and it's less than a year away. And I was like, yo, I saw your birthday. Um, happy birthday. Cause like, I'm probably going to forget on the day. I didn't get you anything. And he's like, thanks bro. <laughs> Cause that works for us. Neither of us likes the pressure of reciprocating gifts. So it's so much better if we just don't get each other anything. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's all about different, different rules for everyone. Totally. Question here from Greg. What's a bad habit you didn't know you had till Yvonne broke the bad news to you? Or somebody close to you? Man. Uh, bad habit. I mean, yeah, I'm like, I didn't realize. No, I pretty much knew that I was an idiot. Um, I'm not, like, I'm not saying that like that makes me some kind of like genius or that there, you know, there was nothing the wrong with me or anything. It's just like, no, I like was pretty aware that I was not super functional, especially back when she met me. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, sorry, I got nothing. Linus, you're just so aware. We, that's what we love about you, right? Yeah, I'm not two wares. I'm just one wear. <laughs> I'm aware. <laughs> Question here from Merrick. Do you think that if everybody had somehow forgotten about LTT or the channel disappeared, you could build up another YouTube channel to the size that LTT is now? I've wondered that a lot. I think it would be a really fun challenge. I know there was another big YouTuber who did it not that long ago. Uh, or streamer or something Ludwig like that. Did. did Ludwig do it? Yeah. There you go. There you go. That must have been him. Uh, but it's like, it's impossible. It's impossible to actually attempt it. Like, here's an example. Supermicro uploaded the videos that I filmed for them while I was down there last week. Two weeks ago? I don't remember when I was there. But I was down there at some point. Uh, they uploaded these videos to their channel. And just having, you know, me in the thumbnail these videos are all doing way more views than, you know, anything else that they upload other than the videos that they pay to run as ads. So even like, like I'd have to not put myself in the thumbnail, but then if I was in the video, so maybe if I tried to do like a, like a faceless channel, like a behind the camera channel or something like that. Yeah, I could, I could try to do it. But I think that a lot of what makes me successful is that engage, that direct engagement with the audience. So I, I think I'd be kind of, I'd be handicapping myself in a way that might make it impossible for me. Like I'm not an algorithm guru. I'm just really excited about what I'm talking about and that works really well. So I think it'd be tough for me. I think it'd be really tough. I have some good ideas outside of tech that I think I could probably crush it with. Um, but they are very time consuming ideas that I wouldn't really be able to pursue as long as I'm running Linus Media Group. Yeah, YouTube is hard. <laughs> I know uh, other creators like Danny Gonzalez has tried to hide his face or mask his voice and go viral on TikTok and everything like that. But like you said, people just immediately recognize you and you start bouncing back. So good luck to the people who are just starting now. Question from a couple of different people, Alexander and Eric, I have here, asking about your thoughts on the direction of infotainment systems in cars with the high techification and leaning away from just pure information and specs about your car to having a lot of information on your screen honestly i feel you're as qualified to answer this as i am i mean uh as a normal kind of guy i think it's super interesting but as somebody who likes to pay attention to the road uh, there's a lot that's demanding your attention now my current car has gauges and sync three from ford is horrendous so i don't want to look at that screen anyways so i have to pay attention to the road but i couldn't imagine if i have a map, I have to look over to change my windshield wiper, 
to change the air temperature in a Tesla, it has like a map of your car that to drag it. Like that's too complicated now. I can't imagine mm. that you're really fully focused on your car when all that's going on. But hopefully Apple and Google really pushing Android Auto and Apple CarPlay to be the full custom car infotainment system. It'll help reduce some of that when it's more standard across all vehicles. But I mean, those are both probably years away. Yeah, I don't know. I get really frustrated. Like, yeah, the only thing I want to engage with in my car is Android Auto. Uh, other than that, I just, you know, I drive a Volt, right? So I've just got a dial for, you know, fan and or a button for where the fan comes out and a dial for how hot it is. There's a button on my steering wheel for my heated steering wheel, button for my heated seat. I think those are about the only things I ever actually engage with. For me, I would say the 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 the, the padded padded environment sort of approach that's taken to infotainment is very frustrating. If there's one thing that I think Tesla understands really well, it's that uh, you're far better off with the very limited amount of distraction from typing the first three characters of something and clicking what it auto completes compared to fighting with voice input. And the way that um, Android Auto has, has more and more forcibly uh, pushed voice interaction over the last few years has been extraordinarily frustrating to me. Like the distracted that I get from entering a voice input three or four times, having it either go to the wrong place or not hear me correctly. And then all of a sudden now, oh man, it's getting real complicated because like Waze, for example, won't even open on your phone screen if you have, and they're owned by Google, for those of you who don't know, so this is definitely a Google problem, but it won't even open on your phone if you have it plugged into your car, which is really stupid because sometimes I'm in the passenger seat and I just want to just f***ing key something in because it's way better and way faster, um, but, but I can't at all. So I have to unplug it type something in, plug it back in, open the app. It is so many steps and it is so distracting compared to if I could just beep, beep, boop, boom, while I'm at a red light or at the end of my driveway or wherever it is that I happen to be, that would be way, way better. Um, yeah, that's, that's, I think, my biggest frustration. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tabex says, don't pretend you don't use every setting on the variable wiper speed. Yeah, yeah, I do. But it's right on the stock, so it doesn't, I don't even have to look to use it. It's just right there. Yeah, you should have tried the Lucid Air. Like, it was, the software was honestly horrendous. Like, the screen, uh, is supposed to lift so you can put stuff in between it, and, like, the, the gap in the kind of center console wouldn't work. Backseat oh. stuff, screen wouldn't turn on. Uh, all the features were, like, disabled. Uh, if you haven't watched that short circuit, I mean, you should subscribe, and you should watch that video. Uh, but... It, it shows that software can ruin a very, very nice vehicle. Uh, next question here is from Alejandro. Been watching since Anthony broke the iMac. Have you hmm. considered a video where a real hacker shows how much control and info someone can access, smart home, computer, etc., maybe sponsored by someone who can prevent such attacks? Everyone we've ever uh, talked to about, you know, intentionally hacking or, or infecting, um, anything here, um, has, has never really been willing to do it. And I think there's kind of like a code of ethics that they're following that prevents them from doing that. And I respect that, but yeah, I think it could be, it could be good content. Uh, Lee tween asks any update on the Porsche order. Um, Yvonne and I are still working that out. I, it was getting one, then it wasn't, then it was, then it wasn't, then it was, then it wasn't, then it wasn't, then it wasn't. Uh, I think right now we're on was, um, but she's never actually driven it. So I think she should try driving it first. And if she doesn't like it, then I'm just not going to get it because there's no point having a car in the garage that only one of us wants to drive. That's stupid. Yeah, is she interested in cars? Is there an electric vehicle that she's been like, I would like that? Hmm. Not even a little. The, her favorite car to drive is our minivan. So it's like, yeah, you know, Props to Honda. The Odyssey is a great vehicle, but like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, next question here. With how uh, the given state of the internet is, oh boy. Uh, they say cesspool. What do you think a good internet looks like? That question's from Robert. I don't think there is a good internet. I think the internet is a reflection of the people using it and people are complicated. 
Enjoy your sweatpants. <laughs> I guess since these are potential rather than curated ones, I might as well read them. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I don't know which ones you uh, have or haven't answered over the last few weeks. Or Yeah, no, I haven't tried the Sleep Buds too. I probably should. Um, thanks for the question. Uh, Pwn intended. Uh, Jediah C. Uh, got the same Epson theater projector that I have and have been running into an issue. When the input switches HDR modes, it goes blank for 15 or so seconds. This can be annoying as the Xbox menu is in HDR. Have you run into this? Yes, it's a thing. I have no idea if they have any plans to fix it, but yes, it's annoying. It doesn't bother me much because I don't really game on, in that room yet. Uh, but yeah, you're right. It's annoying, 100%. Marcus M., other than having great service when customs fail, what are you doing or want to do to improve the LTT store experience for European customers? In the long term, we want to DC there, a distribution center. Uh, there is no timeline for that. I'm sorry. It's really complicated. People keep saying it can't be that complicated. No, it really, really can. Like having a physical presence in a different country is really complicated from a logistical standpoint, from a cost standpoint, and from a uh, taxation and compliance standpoint. There is There are so many more I's we need to dot and T's we need to cross and lawyers we need to pay in order to make sure that we're doing things properly. And people will point at you know others who are able to do it just fine and it's clearly easy, uh, but it, it is not. It is actually not easy. One of the things that, as far as we can tell, we're the only ones doing properly, for example, is tax remittance um, for orders from LTT Store. So even the even the tax software that we use, we are frequently reporting bugs and problems. Um, we've had issues with um, Google's Google having features that aren't supported properly by our tax platform. And um, we're kind of sitting here going, well, other people should have run into this. There's other people clearly using these features in the same country as us, selling to the same countries that we are. So they must just, the only answer is they must just not be remitting taxes properly. But we do not want to get audited five years, 10 years from now and find out that we owe $10 million in sales taxes because what happens is if we don't bill you guys for it, but a government comes knocking on our door saying, hey, you owe us taxes for this. Well, we can't go back to you for it. We have to then pay it. That could break us, right? So we try to do things properly. And yeah, if we didn't do things properly, for sure, <laughs> nothing would prevent us from just like renting a warehouse, like shipping stuff. But that's not how we do things. And so we're just not set up for it. Yeah, a lot of people asking about a third party, a middleman, a reseller. No, as soon as as soon as soon our inventory is there, we have a presence. Even selling on Amazon can be very complicated if you want to do it properly. And we're not some like random fly-by-night from wherever a stand that will just be like, okay, well, forget it. We'll just fold up and we'll start up a new one and blah, 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 blah. Uh, what, are, what are they going to do about it? Like we're in a place where... I can be litigated, right? Like, no. <laughs> uh, right. So uh, when is the Luke plushie or shirt quotes coming? Favorite quote so far from Luke is, that's not interesting. Let's move on. What's yours? Oh, got to be comb it with a brick. I forget why he said that. It was the most nonsensical thing I've ever heard anyone say ever. What does comb it with a brick mean? I don't know. Uh, but I, but I loved it. I loved it. Um, any thoughts on cases that L LTT could design for full, that could be built DIY? Um, I just don't feel like we have anything to contribute to the, the case market right now. So we don't really have much interest in pursuing that. Uh, John asks, Linus, are you ever going to do GPU streaming to Steam Deck video? No, I don't think that merits being the focus of a full video. It's pretty good from my experience with it, but I don't really, yeah, I don't really have much else to say about that. Uh, Anonymous asks, are you going to talk about the new AMD Epic line of processor and the videos that you did with Supermicro? Oh, okay. I ended up talking about it in the, in the meantime. Yeah, it was a fun shoot. Uh, it was really good. Uh, they showed off the entire new lineup of their H13 servers that are going to be for Epic Genoa up to 96 cores of sockets. Freaking wild. PCIe Gen 5, uh, 168 lanes in the single server version and 160 lanes in the DPs. Like that is, that is, that is freaking wild, man. Like you could have, 
what is, what does that even work out to? Like what's a, what's 160 divided by four? Over four. You could have 40 freaking Gen 5 drives running at full tilt in one dual processor server. It's, man, yeah, love it. Love it. All right. Is that it? That's it. This is interesting. Brina says, I was recently at a chemical society meeting where the topic of discussion was nearly fire and explosion proof lithium ion batteries. The company that was presenting the information supplies a phone company in Europe that builds hyper safe cell phones for dangerous workplaces like mines and industrial places. Would this be something LTT would be interested in covering in a video? Yeah, I think I'd be interested in that. I'm pretty easy to get in touch with. There's a publicly listed email um, on the channel, so it's a good place to kind of uh, send something like that. If the, if you actually work for that company and you want to, you know, work with us or whatever else, that seems pretty cool. And I think that's pretty much it for the show today. Oh, I promised I'd give you guys an update on uh, whether you guys like hard mode or easy mode puzzles. So let me just get that for you. I'm gonna refresh this. All right. Um, about 85% of you like hard mode and about a little over 5% of you uh, like each medium mode and very easy mode with the least popular being the 100 piece version. So there are more fakers and frauds than there are people who will admit that they don't really like a challenge that much. <laughs> Oh, uh, which is pretty hilarious. Oh man, this is super annoying. The Shopify dashboard hasn't been loading properly for me. If anyone from Shopify is watching, I do not wish to have this sidebar. I need this sidebar to go away so I can actually interact with the hamburger menu that is loaded behind it here. I need that in order to go back, but I can't. So that's really, 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 really annoying. I basically can't use my dashboard on mobile anymore. It started happening in like the last week. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next week. Same bad time, push, same bad don't channel. Don't push that button. Don't push that button, oh. remember? Well, you're going to have to say goodbye for Luke, though. So. Bye. All right, good job. Right, I gotta check and see when it stops playing. Oh, yeah, I was playing Genshin Impact on his phone. <laughs> <laughs> For sure.